And on the other side of the field, still with an outside chance at a national championship, Frank Solich in his third season as head coach of the Huskers. Nebraska won the toss. They deferred. Kansas State will receive. It is 34 degrees. Maloney. The wind chill is 17. Forecast. It calls for rain, sleet, possibly snow, and the you can see the wind above the stadium. It is strong. And Quincy Morgan will let it go into the end zone, and Kansas State will have it first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Now the Kansas State offense, very balanced. Due to the quarter, quarterback, Jonathan Beasley. Beasley was hurt in this game last year, did not play well, but he has accounted for 30 touchdowns this year. The Kansas State line, they've allowed only three sacks this season. Keep an eye on Milford Stevenson, the left tackle, the key to his protection. And the running backs and wide receivers, they are all explosive. Josh Scoby has taken over that running back spot. Four touchdowns, 149 yards rushing last week. And Kansas State will take over. First and two from their own 20-yard line, and they're going to keep it on the ground. Scobie caught from behind. Back at the 18-yard line. Well, right away, we see Nebraska ready for that run by Kansas State, James. Nebraska, with a good defensive line, they penetrate, they want to attack, get upfield. Craig Ball, we talked to him yesterday, said, we're going right after. We know that they want to run, and we want to shut down that run early. Well, these are two of the most explosive teams in college football in the first quarter. They need to score. Scobie finds some running room, and he bolts ahead to the 25-yard line. Carlos Polk finally tripped him up. Pick up of about five on the play. In fact, Nebraska is the number two scoring team in the first quarter in college football. Behind the Sooners, Kansas State is number three. And, and if you're going to run outside, you need that blocking by the outside wide receivers. That time he gets a nice block from one of the smallest guys on the field. Aaron Lockett gets that block on the cornerback, and Scobie almost breaks this one to the house. And the officials will set the ball. It'll be third down. We'll call it five. Kansas State, a solid 40% on third down conversions this year. They'll bring Quincy Morgan wide to the right. Rocket to the left, Scobie the only setback. Nebraska with eight on the line of scrimmage. Beasley on the option, back to Scobie. One man to beat, and Nebraska's black shirts converge. Maybe picked up two on the play. Joe Walker came up from that rover spot to make the first hit. An excellent job by Joe Walker. They're going to try and run the option. Beasley, there's no fake in the middle because there's no lead back. But once he gets to the edge, he pitches that ball. And Joe Walker does a nice job in turning him back in so that the pursuit can catch up to him. Scobie has to realize the only way I can beat him is to beat him around the edge. Travis Brown standing on his own 12-yard line, set to receive the kick. Good snap, Nebraska with a run. took it right out of the air, took it in the end zone, and the Huskers have the lead. The direct play is right up the middle, number two, Aaron Tempering, comes in, takes that ball right off the foot and into the arms of Keo Craver. You won't get a cleaner block and a catch like that. You know, they practice this when they, when they do it on Fridays, but it never works that way except in a ball game. Well, last year, Kansas State had a couple of punts blocked, a fumbled kickoff. Bill Snyder telling us yesterday special teams were the number one key coming into this football game. Josh Brown with the extra point. He is 99 out of 100 in his career. And Nebraska strikes first, 7-0, goal 55 left in the opening quarter. Football on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Lexus and their passionate pursuit of perfection. We take you down to Aggieville, Barney's. They welcome Ron James. <laughs> With a little more money, they can get an S to go Fox Sports Net. And a comma. <laughs> but you know what? Anytime I see my name up in lights, it makes me happy. Uh, it has to. Seven nothing, along with. James Lofton and Eric Clemens, the Nebraska Cornhuskers striking first. We saw Jay Brooks blocking a punt today for Texas A&M on the Oklahoma Sooners, and we have one tonight. The lot
Line drive, low kick. Quincy Morgan fields it at the five. Has a little bit of running room across the 20, up to the 27-yard line, and that is where he will be stacked up. Let's go back to the block again by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. You know, the amazing thing, we had a chance to sit down with Bill Snyder yesterday. I said, what are the three keys to the ball game? And he said, number one, special teams. He didn't go past that. Special teams obviously already a big impact in this ball game. Pressure up the middle, and you can see guys coming. They're getting pressure. Kansas State must secure that right up front because if you get that leakage, you don't solve it. They're going to continue to come after you. Talk about shell-shocking the sellout crowd here at Kansas State. Scobie left side, and again, he is going to be stacked up by that Nebraska defense, the black shirts. And let's introduce you to the Nebraska defense. They've allowed only one touchdown pass the last four games, and the line is good. They are led by big Kyle Van and Bosch at the defensive end spot. Linebackers, as we mentioned, solid. Shanley, Polk, and Stella. The secondary, that's where the question marks have been, but they have improved. Joe Walker at their rover spot. The pressure is on him tonight. In the first series, we saw them go with three tight ends, one wide receiver. Now they have a fullback in to try to become a lead blocker. Nebraska showing blitz. Beasley will change the play at the line of scrimmage. And we've got movement all over the place and a penalty flag. We've got delay a game. Jonathan Beasley not quickly enough getting to the line of scrimmage and calling that audible. Steve Juszczyk, our referee tonight. Delay a game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Well, Nebraska is only the third team to score a touchdown in the opening quarter against these Wildcats. The other two times, Kansas State has lost the football game to Oklahoma and, of course, A&M. And Frank Solich says, we know what's on the line. We tried to keep it a normal week this week, not getting too high emotionally. But he says, I am not that naive to believe that our kids don't understand what rides on this football game. Second down and 14. Beasley from the shotgun looking for the screen. They've got it to Scobie. And he is dragged down from behind at the 32-yard line. Kyle Vandenbosch coming from that defensive end spot to make the stop. You look at the keys for this ball game. K-State, the one thing they have to do when Nebraska has the ball, they want to force Nebraska into a third and seven plus to make them try and throw the football. They also don't want to allow runs of over 20 yards when Nebraska has the ball. And they want to score with special teams. Right here, you can see this just an ankle tackle pulling down Scobie. Well designed play to let them get that kind of swing gate screen going. And they use Scobie almost as a wide receiver in that last set. Now, these wide receivers are potent. They average about 18 yards of reception. Now, Morgan goes wide to the near side of your screen. Third down and five. Nebraska brings five. Beasley with time, still looking. He's going for the big play. Has Morgan. Fans wanted the pass interference call, not going to get it. DeWan Gross on the coverage, the sophomore out of Garfield Heights, Ohio. You know, Quincy Morgan has a lot of confidence in his own abilities. Right here, he's trying to go up and make this catch. He would have been better served to slow down, let Gross run over his back, and get the pass interference call. You know, he'll learn that as he becomes more and more savvy. That time, he's just trying to make a play, and there's no flag thrown. Now Nebraska trying to get players on the field. Bobby Newcomb awaits the punt at his own 27-yard line. The low snap. Nebraska rushes again. Punter goes down. So does the penalty flag. Travis Brown is down, and he comes limping off the field. A 29-yard kick, but it's coming back. Well, Nebraska obviously saw something in the films that they felt they could come and try to block punts. They came again on Brown. Well, the other thing that you have to realize is that when if there's bad weather, bad conditions, you know that the punter is going to have trouble handling the ball and he's going to take more time in getting set to punt. See him have to go down and really secure that ball and take some long strides into it. And watch him make hang his leg up there and let somebody actually run under him. If you do not give him the area to land, you're going to get the penalty flag. Well, Travis Brown seems to be okay. Has a big smile on his face. And the Nebraska offense yet to take the field. We've played just about four and a half minutes. K-State, good field position. Scobie, and he is going to be dragged down from behind by Randy Stella. And if you 
think about special teams. What happens on a special teams play? Well, you're normally going to give up more than 40 yards of field position. If you're punting the ball or kicking it off, you're transferring a lot of field position. Also, you have the ability to score points, obviously, with extra points and PATs. And in that kicking game, you're also transferring the ball, so you're giving the ball to the other team. The only exception would be with an onside kick where you're trying to get it back yourself. Drive Scobie again around the left side. Slips Van and Bosch's tackle, and he is going to be stacked up. A loss of two on the play. Scott Shanley coming from the linebacker spot, along with Des Moines Adams from the defensive end spot. You know what I see there? I see too many Nebraska guys on their feet. If I'm the offensive line coach for Kansas State, I want those guys on the ground. I want them to have to get up, start cut blocking, get these guys off their feet. Nebraska is a speed defense. When you're going to run wide and stretch the field, those guys have to be on the ground. And exactly what Kansas State didn't want to face, third and long, it's 10 from their own 48-yard line. Morgan on the bottom of your screen. Movement on the left side of Kansas State's line, and Nebraska jumps. Let's see who they call it on. Back to tight end, Shad Meyer moved a little bit, but yeah. he was just getting set in his stance. Here's Mr. Juszczyk. Back to the snap. Outside. On the defense. Five yard penalty. Now Van and Bosch the culprit, and here's why. There's Martez Wesley way on the other side pointing, but if that influences Van den Bosch, yeah. then he better keep his eyes off the cheerleaders. <laughs> it sets up a third down and five. And again, Nebraska stacking the line. Seven men in the box. Beasley looking over the middle, has some time, still looking. Being rushed, takes a hit, pass complete, drop, incomplete. Martez Wesley had it, and they lowered the boom on him. They have had a number of drop passes the last couple of games, and it has hurt this Kansas State offense. The ball hangs up in the air just a little bit at the tail end. Martez Wesley tries to go up. He almost pulls it in, but a cold ball is going to be a slick ball. Nice cleanup tackle by Troy Watchhorn, making sure that he can't get that juggling ball and pull it back down. Well, they had nine drops versus Oklahoma, five drops versus Texas Tech, and that tends to put more weight on Jonathan Beasley's shoulders. He feels he has to do something Superman-type effort. And now Nebraska's going to burn a timeout. Nebraska wants to talk about it. With 8.54 left in the first, if you just joined us, we had an exciting start. The first punt of the game, Travis Brown had his punt block. Keo Craver took it in for the touchdown. That's why Frank Solich's Huskers are up 7-0. The last time they played here in Manhattan, down 30-27 to in the fourth, Michael Bishop hit Darnell McDonald on an 11-yard touchdown pass. Then with Nebraska driving, how about Jeff Kelly? He returns this fumble 22 yards for a touchdown. Kansas State snaps the Nebraska 29-game win streak. The goalpost came down. The final was 40-30, to the first Kansas State win over the Huskers since 1968. A lot of the players telling us yesterday that they felt that there was a burden lifted off their shoulders, but quite frankly, they have to win tonight because there have been a number of question marks throughout the years about Kansas State's schedule. And to legitimize what this team has done, Kansas State must win tonight. That would answer a lot of questions. Joe Walker now back on his 10-yard line. No rush this time, and it's a bad punt. Gets caught up in the air. The official will mark it at the 22-yard line. Only a kick of 25 for Travis Brown, but what a start. Number four, Nebraska leads by a touchdown. It is the 85th meeting between Nebraska and Kansas State. Nebraska has won 30 of the last 31 between these two teams. will take over at their 22-yard line. Verizon presents first and 10 all season long on Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday. Verizon making the world of communications a whole lot simpler. So Buckalder goes in motion. Try it straight ahead. Following behind the big blocks of the big offensive line and Dan Alexander will have not much running room. 
Of the Nebraska offense, the number one rushing offense in all of college football, and their leader is Eric Crouch, the Huskers' all-time rushing quarterback. The line, big and explosive. They're led by center Dominic Riola, one of four Lombardi Award finalists. And the running backs, the eye backs are big. The wide receivers, Wistrom, Newcomb, Davison, all with 17 receptions this year. Crouch will keep it, sees the C, crosses the 25 up to about the 27-yard line. John McGraw on the tackle. Kansas State defense, best in the Big 12, fourth nationally. The line is not big, but they are good. The heart and soul, Mario Fadafehis, he sets the tone. The linebackers, Lieber, Pearson, Lott, secondary. Jared Cooper back at strong safety, sat out last week for disciplinary reasons. Dyshod Carter is their best cover. Third down and six for the Huskers. Again, Buck Calder in motion. Penalty flag flies, Crouch. Trying to get to the corner, he does, and he is hog-tied at about the 34-yard line by Jared Cooper, the senior out of Pearland, Texas. But we do have a flag down. It's thrown out there where you would expect it to be on the alignment of either the offensive defensive line, somebody in the neutral zone one way or the other. Yep. And it'll be against the Huskers. These two teams don't get penalized a whole lot. Illegal shift on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. And you see Jared Cooper there. He's going to have to go into, and when I was in Green Bay, this is what we call Captain Detroit. Because what he's able to do, he's able to not only play pass coverage, but he comes up in a tough position against the run. He's going to have to be all over the field. He will be our Captain Detroit tonight. Two tight ends. Crouch looking to throw it. Gets it up into the flat. Almost intercepted. Almost picked off by John McGraw, the junior from right here in Manhattan, Kansas. And we have another penalty flag thrown on the far side of the field. McGraw has been solid. He is an instinctive player in that defense. This may be a disregard. Disregard the flag. No penalty. I need more information than that than just disregard. Tell me why it came out of the pocket to start with. Nice break on the ball by John McGraw. When we talked to Phil Bennett yesterday, he said, we may switch them up a little bit. McGraw and Jared Cooper, both guys can play that strong safety position. So maybe we'll have two Captain Detroits tonight. The sixth best punter in college football, Dan Haydenfeld. The sixth best return man in college football, Aaron Lockett. At the 36, fumble, the ball is loose. K-State looks like they came back up with it. 43 yards on the kick and almost another major problem on special teams. We have a penalty flag, and it's going to be a hold against the Huskers. Well, for two of the least penalized teams in the conference, they're racking them up here in the first quarter. I think a little bit of that's a little extra nervous energy going into this ball game. So much on the line. Holding on the kicking team. Repeat fourth down. Well, we'll try it all again. You know what? But that's a good job by the four or five guys who are up in the interior of that line. They know that it's a run back that's playing. But you still pressure as if you're coming after the kicker. And if you hustle, you make the opposing team hold you. So that's just Kansas State hustling a little more than the Nebraska squad. Right now, if I'm Kansas State, I put two return men back. The worst thing in the world would be for this ball to hit the turf and to take off rolling. They have so much wind behind them, that could easily happen. Now David Allen stands at his 50-yard line. Hayden Felt in his end zone. Here come the Wildcats. Hayden Felt gets it off. It's a line drive spiral away from Allen. But he'll field it at the 42-yard line, looking for the wall. It's forming. Crosses the 50 into Nebraska territory. 48 yards on the kick, 10 on the return. But Frank Solich did exactly what he wanted him to, make him run to the football. We'll step aside, 6.55 in the first. Nebraska leads the Wildcats.
welcome you back to Manhattan, Kansas, with the Huskers leading 7-0. Just about midway through quarter number one, Jonathan Beasley not been able to do a whole lot offensively thus far. Passing on first down, Beasley looking for Morgan again, pushing and shoving. Out of bounds, incomplete for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's send it to our college football Saturday studios with Kevin Frazier. From the big game in the Big 12 North to the big game in the Big 12 South, earlier today, Oklahoma trailing Texas A&M late, 31-28. Torrance Marshall with his first career interception. That's the game winner, 35-31 in the final as Oklahoma remains perfect, guys. What a great win for the Oklahoma Sooners. We'll have the Oklahoma Sooners and the Oklahoma State Cowboys on November the 25th right here on Fox Sports Net. In an afternoon game, Beasley again throwing, looks for the screen, has a man incomplete. Nebraska was all over it again. And then fans in the stands were one holding, but behind the line of scrimmage, you can hold them. Jonathan Beasley off to a little bit of a slow start. Check out his numbers for the season. We all know about what he's been able to do on the ground. But in 1999, only 44% completions. He's up that to almost 54%. The yardage per game has gone up. But really, this guy is effective once he gets down in the red zone calling his own number. 0 for 3 tonight for the Wildcats on third down. Three wide receivers to the left. Tight end Shad Meyer to the right. Beasley, third consecutive pass. Again, going down the middle, looking for the home run ball. Talk about patience in the pocket. Quincy Morgan is going deep. It takes a long time for this route to develop. The tail end, he lays out. But Jonathan Beasley holds the ball until the last possible second. He takes a big hit from Carlos Folk. And you know what? They don't come any better than that when you talk about catching the football. That's called stretching out. He's been under the weather, Quincy Morgan, this week. Feeling all right tonight. Two tight ends for Kansas State. First and goal, ball is on the seven. Scobie, left side, gets inside the five, keeps the feet moving. Great surge on the left side of the offensive line. Andy Eby, Milford Stevenson, but the guy who creates the surge is the smallest guy, Rock Cartwright, number 25. He goes up in there, he says, there's supposed to be a hole here. I'm gonna make the hole. Look at the fullback going up in there. Hulk on his butt. What a story for Cartwright, the junior out of Conroe, Texas. A junior college transfer. Didn't even show up to school till August. He must have been busy lifting weights. <laughs> Eating yeah. rocks and doing something. And this team was hoping in the red zone last week versus the Cyclones. Yeah. Ten guys in the box right there. Beasley on the option. Puts it on the carpet. Scooby touchdown! <laughs> In basketball, you got a bounce pass. It's the first time I've ever seen a bounce pass on the option in football. Scobie's 14th rushing touchdown of the year. You get quick pressure by Nebraska. They have too many men to block. Theo Craver right there in his face. But on the outside, no one out there to contain. They're doing everything to stop Johnson Beasley. Nice job by Scobie being patient and picking that ball up off the carpet. And the precipitation starting to fall at the stadium. The extra point. Jamie Ream drills it. 43 of 44 on the year. We thought it would be close, and it is. We're tied at 7. 21 left in the first quarter, and we are right where we started. Tied up, seven apiece, courtesy of Josh Scobie's touchdown run. 48-yard drive, took him five plays, about four minutes and 40 seconds. That is why we are tied up. Nebraska only averages about 13 yards a return on kickoff. They're 113th in the NCAA, but that's because they don't get a whole lot of chances. They'll get one here. From the 12, Walker. Running room, cross 
crosses the 40 up to the 44-yard line. Much better than 13 yards. Yeah, but a tough to get a deep kick into this win. You really want to pin them almost up against the boundary. That ball trying to get out to the right boundary, but just floats in the air as going into a stiff win. And nice return by Joe Walker. Gives him something that Nebraska has not had off their kickoff return unit. Good field position and something that Kansas State was expecting to take away from them. Well, we talked to Bill Snyder yesterday about special teams, and he said field position, time of possession. The other two keys in this football game. Nebraska going back to their power game. Alexander, there we see him powering his way down to the 45-yard line as a penalty flag is thrown. This big, solid back of 6 foot, 245 pounds, 48% of his yards come after contact. And John McGraw hits him in the hole. McGraw is now on the sideline. Hit right on the shoulder. You can see Alexander, how broad his shoulders are. You cannot match this guy up and just hit him up high like that. On Kansas State. Well, a little sideline warning. Watch the contact in the hole. You see John McGraw behind. He was hit so hard, he couldn't even grab him afterwards. So hopefully it's just a burner. But you can see that arm going limp. Number 12, Derek Yates is going to come in. I think Yates saw that hit from the side. And he says, if I have to hit this big guy, I'm going low on him. First and 10 from the Kansas State 45. Crouch running the action in trouble, and he'll go down five on the play. We talk about Nebraska and option offense. They have a number of different kinds of options. Yeah, they have a lead option and outside option. You know, when we start talking about with Frank Solich, I'm trying to take down notes and list all the different type of options that he have, and after a while I just gave up. I said, I won't be able to figure them out, but I know what an option looks like. There's a true option where you actually fake it into the belly of the fullback, and if it's open, you give it to him. Well, there's also an option where you're just faking it to him and getting outside. The numbers are crowd, second and 15. He keeps it, puts the right side, gets back into Kansas State territory. Now that looked like an option, but that was part of their power game. He faked as if it was an option, but then he used Dan Alexander, number 38, his eye back as his lead blocker, and he's just falling right up behind him, right in between the guard tackle gap. Well, one thing this Kansas State defense, Bill Bennett, the defensive coordinator, said they had to work on this week is fending off the blocks by the Nebraska linemen. That's one of the keys to stopping this option. I mean, but they have them where they want to right now. Third and 12, this is not a Nebraska type down and distance situation. Four wide receivers. We have a whistle and a stoppage of play on the far side. And that was so hard for Chris Johnson, yeah. number 36, to pull off. But an extremely smart play. Snap. False start. Offense. And you're going to get that false start from those offensive linemen because they're not used to dropping back in a straight pass set. They're used to play action pass and different things like that. But third and 12, now third and 17, yeah. this is not a down and distance that makes Frank Solich comfortable calling the plays, and he knows that his unit is not used to this. And Phil Bennett, he's just been salivating about this all week long. If I can get him in third and 17, should I attack? And I asked yep. him that question. Do you attack these guys? He said, yes, I do attack them. Because I don't want to give them a comfort level. So I'm going to bring five guys coming after them because I know we have one-on-one -on -one cover guys outside. But they're having problems getting the right unit on the field. And now Kansas State's going to have to call a timeout because just what you said, they were shuffling players in and out. Well, Nebraska went from their four wide receiver set back to their regular personnel. Kansas State had to get their regular personnel. I'd rather see that timeout than have the wrong personnel out there. Well, tomorrow on America's favorite pregame show, J.B., Terry, Howie, Chris are joined by weather girl Jill Jillian Barb Barbary. Sorry, messed it up again. Who tells you where it's hot and where it's not? Plus, our sarcastic sage, Jimmy Kimmel, he'll make his pick and get in his licks on the guys. It's all part of the wildest NFL pregame show on TV. Fox NFL Sunday tomorrow at noon, Eastern, 9 Pacific, only on Fox. Manhattan, Kansas. Sellout crowd. North Division title on the line.
Much has been written about Bill Snyder, only 1-19 versus top 10 teams in his tenure here. But 15 of those 19 losses have been against either Colorado or Nebraska. Eight of those losses came early in the 90s. Only four have come when his team has been ranked. But still the bottom line is the controversy will continue about whether or not Kansas State is legitimate unless they can beat Nebraska continually. You know what? They're legitimate. Nobody beats Nebraska on a continuous basis. And when you go up against top 10, top 15 teams, you're not going to have that 9-1 and one record like you do against everybody else. You're going to split. You look at Nebraska's records against the top 10 teams. They're about 500. Against everybody else, they're about 950. John Gibson in motion. Third down and 17. Crouch going down the middle. Has a man the overthrown intended for Matt Davison and he wanted a holding call not going to get it and Nebraska will be forced to kick it away and a critical three minutes and 11 seconds on the clock the wind is playing such a big factor here Nebraska has a chance to pin K-State back with a good punt you, you'd love to kick it out of bounds inside the 15 yard line Inside the 10, bigger bonus. Inside the 5, huge bonus. Now the wind is really going west to east. It's coming directly across the stadium, which is knocking a lot of balls down. Hayden Velt set to kick it away. First punt was 50. And he drills this one, a high spiral. Wait a minute. Allen's going to let this one go. What a kick. Bryce Leibel is blocked into Hayden Felt, and there's a flag on the play. Number 33, Bryce Leibel, blocked into the punter, and a flag is thrown. We also have a flag thrown down at about the 15-yard line. They mark the punt at the four, but we're going to have to sort this thing out. Nebraska already with five penalties tonight. They average six a game. Once again, special teams. They were a factor last year in this football game. They've been in a factor for the last four games for Kansas State. And the officials have a big decision here. If that's if this is running into the punter, that's five yards. Roughing them, it's 15 yards and a first down. Well, let's see if we've got it all figured out. And, and this is when both coaching staffs love to come out and find out what's going on. Roughing the kicker. that are set will penalize the 15-yard penalty and first down. See, now, I just don't buy this call. And I know it's a judgment call, and I know the guy down the field is using what he considers his best judgment. But look at the blocker right there. His hands are on the guy. When that happens, they, he's getting pushed in and ridden into the punt. Mm -hmm. Well, Bryce Leibel has four blocks in his career. Dan Hayden Felt's going to put on the cap and the jacket. He did his job, and he boomed that kick. And the Kansas State fans, sellout crowd. You, you, you almost don't even risk coming after the punter in that situation. If you can't get to him, you just continue upfield. But that time, Bryce Leibel is getting ridden down into the punter. So he's getting pushed into him. And to me, that's not a foul. And Nebraska will have it on the 32-yard line. 36-yard line, I should say. First and 10, tied up at 7. From the eye formation. Going to try the right side, Alexander, the senior out of Wentzville, Missouri. 74 yards away from 1,000 yards rushing this year. Picks up a good chunk. We'll give him 7 on that play. How about all three, the ABC running backs for... Nebraska, Alexander, Buck Calder, and Crouch all with over 100 yards last week. All three going over 2,000 yards in their career, something that rarely happens in the NCAA. Second and three, Nebraska definitely in the driver's seat now. Straight ahead power game again inside the 30 down to about the 27-yard line. Alexander wrapped up by Monty Beisel, the senior out of Douglas, Kansas. But Nebraska's bread and butter, something they didn't do against Oklahoma in their loss, run that power game. Crouch went over 100, but Buck Alder and Alexander were held in check by Mike Stoops and Brent Venable's defense. But this drive is courtesy of the Kansas State special team. Running into the punter, regardless of 
whether or not you like the call, giving the brass a fresh set of downs. And Alexander will get the first down. Ben Lieber wrapping him up. But they're getting great blocks from their fullback, Willie Miller, the big senior out of Omaha. And you, you look at Willie Miller. He's not as short as some fullbacks are, so he doesn't always get the pad leverage. But that time, he does a nice job in staying after Terry Pierce. We talked about Pierce at the outset of this program. A youngster, you have Willie Miller, who's a senior, been around the block a couple of times. He knows the importance of this ball game. He knows about making first contact. And he says he loves flattening guys on blocks. Crouch, a little play action, keeps it in. Stay right there to wrap him up. Jason Kazar, the senior out of Manhattan, Kansas, comes up with a tackle. Crouch had no place to go. We talked to Frank Sola yesterday. He said early on, yes, I do like to sprinkle in some play action passing. And when they play action pass, they're going for a big play or they're going for the end zone. Here they are close to the red zone, play action pass, and they try they want the big play. It's not there. Now they're in second and twelve, and he guaranteed us we will continue on with our power game. It may look a little different in the set like this one does, but it will be power football. Down the line, Crouch keeps it, pours his way inside the 25, down to about the 23-yard line. Pickup of about four on the play as we close in to 60 seconds left to play in the opening quarter. You know, you, you can talk about Eric Crouch just being a quarterback, but that's not really a because look at the point of contact there. He's running into Jason Kazar, a 225-pound linebacker, and he wins the battle at the point of attack there. And Crouch is also gets my award for the tough man today. Absolutely. He has on a cutoff T-shirt under his jersey. How about Dominic Riola? He's got the short sleeves on at the center spot. Yeah, Third down and linemen are crazy. <laughs> Crouch looking across the middle as Davison's got it. Five, three, down to the one. What a catch and throw. Crouch to Davison. His 18th reception on the year. He sells his moves so well, that's what gets him open. And Solich told us, he said, the play action won't affect the cornerbacks because they're locked on one-on-one. -on -one. But what it does affect are the linebackers and the underneath coverage. That time, there's no one in between Crouch and his intended receiver. An easy throw and catch to David. Touchdown, Nebraska. Crouch with the keep. His 17th rushing touchdown of the year. They are near impossible to stop when they are in the red zone. Two Nebraska touchdowns, all, all off special teams. One block punt, turn for a touchdown. Running into the punter gives Nebraska an extra set of down. They take advantage of it, put the ball in the end zone. Josh Brown looking for his 93rd consecutive point after. Put it in the books. For the sophomore from Foyle, Oklahoma. Kansas State ties it up at seven, and Nebraska goes ahead with 31 seconds. Well, the Nebraska faithful on hand tonight. Right now, the number four team in the country leading the number 16 team in the country, 14 to seven. Chase Long, the senior out of Wahoo, Nebraska, the walk-on set to kick it away. Nebraska does give up a lot of yards on their kickoff return team, over 21 yards a game. Frank Solich says it has gotten down to about 18 yards a game since conference play, but he does not want to give Kansas State field position. Chase Long gets his foot into this one. Morgan, three yards deep. He'll try the left side. Hit at the 20, and that is where he will go down. For Dr. Pepper Game Break, here's Kevin Frazier in our College Football Saturday Studios. Guys, Georgia and Auburn, Auburn just two wins away from the SEC championship game. Tariel Biera trying to get him there. He picks off Ben Laird. He's headed to the house. 74-yard interception for touchdown. Georgia out early. Artie says hello, guys. He's warm here in the studio with his feet up watching the game. <laughs> yeah, how many bagels has he had today? <laughs> That's why he wanted the studio gig. He's cool in the summer, warm in the winter. Kansas State on first down. They continue to try to establish that run game with Josh Scobie. Scobie really took over that running back spot. The junior out of Oklahoma City. Spent some time out of Northeastern A&M Junior College. And they are just thrilled by this young man. And that'll wrap 
wrap up the first 15 minutes of play in Manhattan. Bill Snyder wants to still have some outside chance of getting to the Big 12 championship game. One quarter in the books. A block punt gave Nebraska the lead. Kansas State countered. But Nebraska has a field. What it's doing, he goes, it's spitting. So we'll go with that. Along with Eric and James Lofton, I'm Ron Thulin. You can see our updated game stats. Kansas State was 70 total yards, but they trailed 14 to 7. Quarter number two on the way. Scobie. He'll try the left side, takes the first hit, gets to the 24-yard line. Kyle Vandenbosch wraps him up. Let's check in with Nanook of the North, better known as Eric Clemens on the sideline. Eric, what is it like out there? Well, it's now really wet. If I didn't know any better, I would think that it was warmer since the rain is falling. Nebraska has two small heaters on its sideline. You see many players gathered around, but footing might be a bigger issue. Many of the players on both sides, guys, just wearing a sneaker type of shoe. We've still seen a lot of slipping and sliding out there, guys. Well, and Kansas State continues to try to establish the run game. They had 360-plus yards last week versus Iowa State. On third down and six, Beasley will pitch it back to Scobie. Has a little alley, takes advantage of it, steps out at the 29-yard line, and he'll be short by about a foot. And wasn't forced out of bounds. Sometimes you get along that boundary, you get a little too relaxed. Scobie thinking he had a little more room than what he actually did. Stepped out of bounds. He had about five extra yards he would have gotten there had he not gone out of bounds. The official did a good job in marking him out of bounds. Fans bundled up. Nobody has left. There's not an empty seat in this stadium, despite the fact the wind chill is in the teams, and it's miserable. They're going to bring the chains over and try to measure things out. We talk about Kansas State trying to establish the run. Nebraska has been very good against the rush the last five of the last seven games. Uh, five of the last seven opponents yet to reach 100 yards, and it is a first down. That's the first down. I think Bill Snyder may have done a little lobbying there on the spot. You know, you can lobby all you want. Yeah. Those officials aren't, aren't going to waver. They, they drop a flag. They make a call. They don't go back on what they consider their word. That ball was right along our Verizon first down line, so I should have been able to spot that a lot easier. I think you should have, too. <laughs> It's first down for the Wildcats from their own 30-yard line. Nebraska again with seven in the box. Beasley from the shotgun throws into the flat. The receiver slips and falls. Martez Wesley had his feet go right from underneath him. Well, tonight on Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday, we've got the conclusion of our college football quadruple header. Number 10, Oregon State takes on Arizona in a Pac-10 showdown, making a full day of college football right here on Fox Sports Net. I already said Oregon State in a runaway. How about you, Big James Law? That's what Artie said? That's what Artie said. Artie said Oregon State in a runaway. In a runaway. On our pregame show at 11.30 Eastern this morning, he said that, I believe. Yeah, he's probably wavering by now. <laughs> well, second down and 10, and now Kansas State will use their second time out in the opening half. And you can see what he has meant to the team as far as career touchdowns, rushing and passing. And as Kansas State talks about it, we'll step aside. 14-7 is our score. Rain has started to fall in Manhattan, Kansas. Everybody doing everything they can, just try to stay dry. Kansas State with the football, second and 10 from their own 30 yard line. 1443 left in quarter number two. Three wide receivers to the right. This is a matchup that they like. Joe Walker, the strong safety guard, and a wide receiver one on one. They run the screen and it's picked off. Quincy Morgan had it, had it intercepted by Lauren Kaiser. What a fluke play. They tried to run that wide receiver screen, and it bounced off Morgan right into the hands of Kaiser. The accuracy of a short pass is probably most important, especially when you get in heavy traffic. That ball hits Quincy Morgan on his right thigh, doesn't get in his hands, and bounces right up. Nice alert play by Lauren Kaiser. All he's doing is turning to try and get up in the area, but his hands look better than the wide receiver's hands. 13 yards on the return, and Quincy Morgan has had problems holding on to the football this year. And Nebraska in the red zone of Kansas State. Straight ahead running into that purple jersey defense. 
Carell Buckalder, the junior out of Collins, Mississippi. Guys are being looked at on the sideline. Tough care in the rock. You know, it's easy hitting guys, but all of a sudden guys hit you, and you know, you're thinking back to when you were in high school and you weighed 250 pounds, you're a big running back. Guys start taking shots on you, especially those other big linemen. It's payback time. Well, Kaiser was hurt in the Missouri game. He has a strained ligament in his foot. He may have aggravated it in this cold weather. Pitch back, Buck Holder slip, keeps his feet. Inside the 15, down to the 12, 12, Devane Robinson, the junior out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, comes up and makes the stop. And Mother Nature has played just a little bit of a trick on the players. They came out for pregame warm-ups. The field was dry, so they said, okay, we can wear our dry turf shoes. The field is now wet. You need little rounded nubs. Do you see these flat nubs on the bottom of the feet? That's going to be slipping. You have a chance to make one cut, not two cuts. Now Nebraska's going to be penalized for illegal right. substitution. They had 12 men in the huddle trying to pull a fast one on K-State and not decide who they want in the ball game. Time to the snap. Nebraska broke the huddle with 12 players. Five-yard penalty. And that's one of the illegal rules that the officials wanted to enforce this year. They've made a point of it. And that's also an official, uh, a rule that Bob Stoops uh, thought should have been enforced down in A&M today. Sure. And uh, he vented his frustration on the officials. And you can see eight penalties already, almost 70 yards between two teams that you usually don't see that from. But see, they're doing the same thing right there with grouping those guys on the sideline and then sending them out to the short area. Because they're, they're just near their own half, so they don't have far to go to get to the field. That was a huge penalty considering the win. Third down and 10. Crouch looking, has some running room straight up the middle. Takes a hit at the 17-yard line and goes down Terry Pierce, that redshirt freshman middle linebacker out of Fort Worth, Texas. Mario Fadafehi also on the stop. Saw Eric Crouch, he goes back in the pocket, just a straight drop back, and when he decides to run, normally good footing, there his feet go out from under just a little bit. Terry Pierce coming up trying to put a big hit on him. And Nebraska will attempt the field goal. Dan Hayden felt will be the holder, John Garrison the snapper. Josh Brown just three of six on field goal attempts this year. They spotted at the 18, it'll be a 28 yarder. Now let's check out his shoes, see if he has on the dry shoe where he can plant. The ball is down and it is no good. And you saw him try and stop abruptly and he slid just a little bit as he was getting into that ball. And, and kickers, they have multiple sets of shoes. They have a kicking shoe, they have a plant shoe. He needs a plant shoe with better footing on. Special teams have been the highlight of the night. Nebraska cannot convert. The bullet after the interception. Nebraska cannot convert the field goal, and Beasley brings the troops back on first and ten from their own 20-yard line, trailing 14 to seven. Thought Joe Walker shift down. They'll run away from that side if they're smart. And they go straight ahead to Scobie. Up to the 24-yard line. Keeps moving his feet. Let's check in with Kevin Frazier for a Dr. Pepper game break. Guys, great finish in the Big Ten. Closing seconds. Ohio State and Illinois tied at 21. Dan Stoltz from 34 yards out. It's just barely good, but it's good enough for the 24-21 win. There's a four-way tie atop the conference, but Purdue is in the driver's seat. Kevin, I tell you, what a day in the Big Ten today. How about that? Northwestern losing. My goodness, does anybody want to go to the Rose Bowl? Second down and seven, a little mix-up. Scobie will be tripped up right at the 22-yard line. He'll lose three on the play. Randy Stella, the linebacker, the junior from Omaha, Nebraska, coming up to make the stop. One thing that Kansas State looks like they're going to be forced into now is throwing the football again. Beasley has already thrown eight passes. Is he the kind of quarterback James that can throw 20, 25 times a game? You know, when we talked to Ron Hudson yesterday, he said the ideal situation would be about 20 times per ball game. But you don't always get ideal. You don't have ideal conditions tonight. And if they're behind, they're going to have to play catch up in this ball game. They tried to run on first and second down. Now it's up to Beasley to convert. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Beasley is hit, and he is going to be dropped. That is only the fourth sack given up by the offensive line of Kansas State. Polk made the first hit. 
Carlos Polk relentless up the middle. He's been right along that offensive line all day. He beats John Robinson in that short route to the quarterback. They had the blitz picked up on the outside. Beasley held it just a little too long, but he didn't think that he'd get pressure in the middle. He thought his guys in the middle would give him a little more time. Travis Brown standing on the goal line. Bobby Newcomb on his own 47 to receive the punt. And Nebraska peels back, and it's a good kick. High spiral, Newcomb at the 42, dropped it. Heads to the left side, no place to go. Puts his head down and gets up to the 45-yard line. 43 yards on the kick, three yards on the return. 14 to 7 is our score with 9.56 left in the second. When we return, we'll send you back to Kevin Frazier at our college football Saturday studio with a preview of our Nissan halftime report. Back to Ron and James. Guys, it's all yours. All right, thank you very much, Kevin Frazier. Looking forward to the halftime show. Update us on all the scores and all the highlights and all the upsets today. Nebraska takes over. First and 10 from their own 45-yard line. You can see they've had good field position all night. Straight ahead with the power game up to the 50-yard line. A pickup of about five on the play. Dan Alexander, number two in the Big 12 rushing, number 12 or 22 nationally. When you think about it, obviously Nebraska number one rushing offense, but what's unusual, they don't have a rusher in the top 20. Nebraska retains possession. Just as tough to throw a 15-yard out as it is to throw a three-yard toss. The ball's a little wet. It's slippery. There's wind going on. Eric Crouch flips the ball back. His job doesn't end then. Eric Crouch is a football player. So he says, well, I, I got to go block somebody. So I'm thinking this guy right here, Mario Fadafé, I'm going to get him before he gets me. Well, he picks the biggest guy in the defensive line, too. Nebraska just one of five on third downs. Third and seven. Where Phil Bennett wants him. And here comes the blitz. Crouch rolling out. Looks for Davison. Incomplete. And Nebraska will be forced to punt. Now, if you're Kansas State, your top two quarters are the first and second. They have failed to get anything going offensively. Only seven points. If you're Bill Snyder, aren't you saying to your offense, we've got to get some points on the board here in the second quarter because Nebraska is so strong in the second half of a game. But I also think that Kansas State did very well going into the win. The big pass to Quincy Morgan. They established the fact that, yes, we will throw deep despite the conditions. Now they need some positive yardage from David Allen here. He's on his 11. Aiden Feld, a driving kick. Allen will call the fair catch right at the 10-yard line, and a penalty flag will be thrown. And that's not the halo rule. That should be a personal yeah. foul for tackling him. Well, he threw up his hand on a fair catch very late and real quick. Got to break down earlier. It's yeah. slick. You're not going to have your footing. You just can't go on a full run, and Randy Stella is feeling like, hey, I got victimized there. My guy's pushing me in the back a little bit. You guys didn't call that. Once again, we mentioned it early, special teams. When you have adverse conditions in a game of this magnitude, they are so important. Here's Steve Juszczyk. We have a five-yard halo violation on a kicking team. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, they did call it a halo violation. See, I thought a halo violation was when you interfere with his ability to make the catch. He's caught the ball. And then you tackle him. Yeah, so what if he's pushed a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's he that tried, type of thing. He tries to, tried stop, to stop. Yes, and his guy, Jeremetrius Butler, with that Fagans is right behind him, 21. He can't stop. Got split back. He's passing set right here. Okay, they fooled me on they that jumped one. Jumped on that one, and we have a penalty flag thrown again. It doesn't seem like anybody has established any tempo in this game. Fair statement? I think a very fair statement, and I think we've had some errors, had a small penalty, turnovers. False start. Offense. And we mentioned it, that Bill Snyder telling us yesterday that this is a better football team than they were in September, 
but not better as far as consistency is concerned. And that has been a problem. He was concerned at the beginning of the year of team chemistry. He says it's better, not where he would like it to be, but the consistency for Coach Snyder's team just isn't there. And it'll be first and 15, balls on the 11-yard line. David Allen trying to spin away. Hasn't gotten a whole lot of playing time. He got hurt in a game you saw right here on Fox Sports Net, the Eddie Robinson Classic, game number one of the year against Iowa. And I don't think he's really recovered 100% since then. You know, I, I think he's healthy, but there's another thing in getting your timing back. You go through training camp early in the season, guys are going through two-a-days, you get in the groove. You get hurt, you get a little left behind, your conditioning wanes, you can only do so much on the bike or the Stairmaster. Mm -hmm. You have to get used to getting hit again also. And he's been looking a little tentative sometimes running the football. On second down, Beasley is going to be sacked again. Randy Stella coming in for his fifth sack of the year in the second of the evening for the Nebraska Huskers. My goodness. When you run play action, what you do, you take your two backs away from being able to block on the edge. When they fake inside, you see the tackle step down. This back is going that way. There's no one to block Stella. He has a free run at the quarterback, Beasley. How about Beasley himself only being sacked two times this year coming into the game? He's got two tonight. And they're about to have to burn their third time out also. This is a dangerous situation if you're a Wildcat fan. That's a delay. It is on the four-yard line penalty flag, and that will be a delay a game, and it'll back him up even more. Be the fourth penalty on Kansas State. Delay game on the offense. Half the distance. Repeat third down. Coaching staffs have to be aware of how quickly the ball is going to be sacked. You see, right. Jonathan Beasley was only sacked three times in the first ten ball games, twice tonight. But after that sack, that ball was put into play quickly, and you can see the players jogging on and off the field. It's a long run to get back there toward yeah. the goal line. You're calling the play at about the 30. Your guys have to run from here all the way down. That's a long haul. Now Quincy Morgan on the near side. Third and a bunch, 24. Beasley looking for Morgan. Let's it fly, has it caught! Quincy Morgan up to the 35-yard line. And Aaron Sweeney will get the go to ward on that play. Third, 24. You don't let him catch the ball. Commit the personal foul. Pass interference. Go for that. That's 15 yards. You don't let him come up with a huge play like that. Quincy Morgan, nice route, and a very gutsy call by Ron Hudson, the offensive coordinator. But he did the smart thing. He rolled away from where he wanted to throw the ball. Excellent protection up front by the offensive line. And Quincy Morgan making a great catch on a ball that wasn't thrown all that well. And it was a pickup of 34 yards on the play. He averages almost 19 yards every reception. Kansas State out of a big hole. Penalty flag is thrown. Allen, nothing doing. He is going to be wrapped up right at the 37-yard line. He got flags on both sides, so it's either going to be someone's in the gap defensively or you have an illegal formation on the offense. Don Caprol, the head linesman, talking to Steve Hughes, Jack. Illegal formation on the offense. That goes in my category. If you get beat mentally before you will physically, how hard is it to line up? I got a son who's in the seventh grade. Illegal the seventh grade team can line up with the right on the guys offense. on the line of scrimmage. Not enough players on the line of scrimmage. Penalty declined. Second down. That'll bring up second down and 11. Six minutes left to play in quarter number two. If you just joined us, Nebraska got on the board first, courtesy of a block punt. Kansas State tied it up, and then Nebraska came back to take the lead. A little confusion by Nebraska. They don't have their nickel package on the field. Jonathan Beasley, a quick pass to the outside is his best bet right here. He's got Morgan at the bottom of your screen. Looking over the middle, locks on one receiver. Pushing and shoving, Aaron Lockett, intended receiver, incomplete. If 
Every time you throw the ball, you're going to try and go deep down the field. You're going to allow Nebraska to get after your quarterback. We've seen two sacks tonight already, and here's Milford Stevenson on Vandenbosch. Their rush in. See these two guys locking up Stevenson, trying to push him around the corner. At some point, you have to you cross the field and let your crossing routes work for you. Everything has been deep down the field. They've been able to stretch the field. Now that they've been able to stretch it up the field, now you want to work across the field in this direction. Martez Wesley, Lockett, Morgan, the wide receivers. Here comes the rush. Beasley has a man. It is Morgan to the 45, and he is chased out of bounds to the 49-yard line. Juan Gross on the coverage, and Eric Clemens and Quincy Morgan putting on a show tonight. Absolutely putting on a show, and he has really carried this team's momentum and their confidence on his shoulders. Early on, they were kind of down until he made the big 41-yard catch. They were really down expecting something bad to happen until he pulled them out of that deep in their own territory with a 34-yarder. Now we just saw him with another one. Quincy Morgan ready to come up big tonight, guys. And we mentioned earlier he was really feeling under the weather. They've been passing a flu bug around this Kansas State team. Already up to 89 yards on three catches. Straight ahead of running the football. And Nebraska is there to stop it. Chris Kelsey, the sophomore out of Auburn, Nebraska, who started the last five games now for the Huskers. Craig Bowl, the defensive coordinator from Nebraska, said something very, I don't know how to phrase it, but he was talking about Kansas State and their offensive line. He said, these guys are athletic. They're, they're not real big. There's Craig Bowl right there. He said, but they're good athletes. So when guys aren't big, you want to get on them right away. And in the middle, in the defensive front, they've been able to stifle them. They haven't been able to use their athletic ability. On second and eight, the crossing pattern. It is complete. Down to the 42-yard line, Aaron Lockett. He's being covered by Joe Walker. We talked at the beginning of the game. Pressure is on Walker tonight. But the last two passes that Kansas State has completed have been the crossing variety. What they did early, they were able to test the field, stretch mm -hmm. them vertically. Now they can stretch the field horizontally, go across short routes because they've made the guys back up. They know that we have the ability to go deep and run past you. Now they're stretching the field the other direction. They've got to get this play in. One thing that did do is maybe give Aaron Lockett a little bit of confidence. He's also had a dropsy problem this year. Third down and just a yard to go. Beasley changing things up again. And they jump on the right side. Looked like Thomas Barnett, the big junior out of Oklahoma City, Millwood High School in Oklahoma City, made the jump. Right the snap. Full start. Offense. Well, you go third and one to third and six. Well, and the, the amazing thing, you have a third and one or a third and two. It doesn't seem like you would have to audibleize that much, nor does it seem like it would be that tough to get a play in. You're matching power against power at that point. And you just want to attack straight ahead. That time, you give your offensive lineman a little bit too much to listen to and a little too much to think about. Let these guys come off the football and just play. Well, Bill Snyder said he talked to his team about wanting them to think back of the game they were most prepared for in a game they made the least amount of mistakes and draw off that experience tonight. But so far, that hasn't been the case. Third and six, Lockett dancing around. Beasley to put it up, four-man rush. Pass is complete. Down to the 37-yard line, it is Aaron Lockett. Keo Kramer gives him a big shove to knock him out of bounds. That is Lockett's second reception today. But this was the key play of this drive from the end zone. Beasley to Morgan. But once again, a very gutsy call by Ron Hudson. A lot of things can go wrong when you drop your quarterback back in the end zone. That time, a lot of things go right at the tail end of the play. And using the crossing routes to their advantage, now maybe is the time to go up top. Got Quincy Morgan down at the bottom one-on-one. -on -one. Carlos Polk showing blitz. He backs off. Beasley. Look out from behind. He has some running room. He's dangerous to the 25-yard line, and that'll be good enough for another Wildcat first down. 12 on the pickup. Man-to-man -man coverage. Everyone is running with the wide receivers. Jonathan Beasley back in the pocket. Realizes the coverage has taken away what he wants, but they're also chasing the receivers, and there's no one to come after him. Smart play by Beasley, pulling it down and heading upfield for a nice game. The young man was so patient, waiting for Michael Bishop's career to end, and you can see he's led him on a 10-play, 59-yard drive, closing in on five minutes. Yeah, but this drive is much more than that. They were all the way back on the two-yard yeah. line. 
Roby, right side. Cuts back down to the 20-yard line, and that's where they'll mark him. Rio Keo Craver took his legs from underneath him. How would this do, though, as far as momentum for Kansas State? Because they haven't played well in this football game. They only trail 14-7, to but this has to be a momentum builder for this squad. Yeah, you know, I'll debate whether or not they've played well. They, they haven't played polished. It's been a little raggedy, but they've been scrappy. And the one thing I think a lot of Kansas State fans feel, well, we hope we don't lay down against Nebraska. This team has been far from doing that. I think they've battled them really well. They've been aggressive. Trying to get back in this ball game. Well, Scobie was looking for the edge. He is chased out of bounds by Scott Shanley, the sophomore out of St. Edward, Nebraska. Scobie has added so much to this offense. They weren't sure who was going to be starting at that running back spot. David Allen was the starter in game number one, but Scobie, who just has this solid body, he combines the bulk and the speed, has just been the tonic that this offense has needed. Uh, and I think here on third and seven, critical call. Number one, you have a kicker who's good enough to give you three points and read. Mm -hmm. Here, you take a chance, maybe go for the end zone, and that's really the nature of this ball club, to come up with the big play. Big third down, third and seven. Scobie goes in motion. Beasley looking for Scobie, goes the other way. Looking down the middle, has Morgan. Almost picked off, Inters incomplete. Dewan Gross had a hand on it. And that'll set up a fourth down situation for the Wildcats. A nice defensive cover by Dewan Groats. He has help behind him, so he's able to cut up underneath and go for the interception here. If Beasley throws this ball out in front of Morgan, he has a chance. And Kansas State will kick the field goal. Jamie Ream hasn't been 100% healthy. Still has hit 11 of his last 13 field goals. His longest this year is 39. We'll mark this at the 28-yard line. It'll be a 38-yarder. And it'll sneak inside the uprights. Jamie Ream gets Kansas State three more. And with 2.42 to play in the half, the gap has been closed to four. Jamie Ream's field goal pulls number 16, Kansas State, within four of Nebraska as we... Into the final two minutes of the opening half. And he booms this kick five yards deep. And Walker is going to take a seat in the end zone. And Nebraska will take over on their own 20. Alec covered 63 yards, 14 plays, 545. But the big play, once again, from the end zone, Beasley to Morgan. And they're picking on those quarterbacks at times for Nebraska. And that was the question mark coming into this game. Can the corners of Nebraska hold up to the Morgans and the Lockets of Kansas State? State. Well, they made the play to keep them out of the end zone, but on third and 24, give up a 34-yard gain. So yeah. I'd have to give them a C- on that last drive for the defensive secondary of Nebraska. Now Kansas State's Phil Bennett switching players in and out on defense. Nebraska, two wide receivers to the right eye formation. Crouch hit immediately and dropped. What a hit by Chris Johnson out of Chickasha, Oklahoma. You know, the coaches challenged him at the beginning of the year to step up his game, and he has done just that this season. Well, they had exactly what they needed. They had nine guys up in the box, get quick penetration through the gap, trying to get that play out wide. Crouch probably does a smart job in not pitching it, because something worse could happen there. He takes the loss here. Good setup for Kansas State. Second and 15, Crouch pitches it. That was dangerous, and it goes out of bounds. Nebraska will have the football. That almost looked like it was thrown forward. Ben yeah. Bieber was right there. That ball almost looked as if it traveled forward. Just when you said he made the smart play, he almost did something that cost him. That Roger ball Wright. is a forward pass. That Absolutely. is not a lateral. Absolutely. The officiating crew missed one there very slightly because the ball has to go backwards. And now the crowd right back into this football game. Everybody is standing. Nebraska facing third and 15. And the great thing for Kansas State is that that ball went out of bounds, so it stopped the clock. Kansas State cannot give up big plays on third downs. And now a timeout is going to be called, and Nebraska wants to talk about it, and that gets the crowd yelling even more.
America's favorite pregame show. J.B., Terry, Howie, and Chris are joined by weather girl Jillian Barbary, who tells you where it's hot and where it's not. Plus, Jimmy Kimmel, they'll make his picks, and he gets his licks on the boys. It's all part of the wildest NFL pregame show on television today, Fox NFL Sunday, tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, right here on Fox. Good time on that show. They really you know, do. They, they need to add two more guys to that lineup. Me and you. Me and exactly. <laughs> <laughs> are we inside and are we warm? <laughs> that guy's mustache and that beard's going to be solid when this game's over. I tell you, I'd like to take a time to thank our camera crew once again. Second week in a row, we've put these guys through the most adverse conditions you can imagine. Gentlemen, thank you. Everybody who's hauled the cables and set up the cameras. D. Fence. I even found that out. Third down and 15, 154. Nebraska has had to average about almost 10 yards on third down. Kansas State switching players all around. They have five on the line from the shotgun. They rush five. Crouch calls his own number. Skips ahead, jukes one, gets up to the 25. He'll be about five yards short of the first down. Do you use your timeout if you're Kansas State here? No. I'd save it. But I think Bill Snyder's smarter than me. That's why you're not it. a head coach. Absolutely. And Kansas State is going to burn their final timeout of the half. If you don't use it there, it takes about 10 seconds to get the the ball placed. Another 25 seconds can run off, so they've got a minute 39 here as opposed to a minute even. Frank Solich making sure his special team is set. Making sure Dan Hadenfeld is ready. This Kansas State team, though, you can feel the confidence building in their squad right now. They have been ravaged by Nebraska over the years. They were crushed last year by the Huskers. They're hanging with them toe-to-toe -to -toe right now. In fact, they've more than doubled the total yardage in this football game. The so, Kansas State defense has done yeoman's work. Saw so Bryce Leibel, number 33, run into the punter. See David Allen back deep, but they also have Terrence Newman, number four. He's up, and if they're going to block, Newman is the fastest guy on their team, and an up and under from either of these two players might be there. And they peel it back. Aiden Felt trying to kick away. Gets a Kansas State roll, goes back into Nebraska territory, and that'll be just shy of midfield. Only 24 yards on that kick. And plenty of time left for the Wildcats with 1.28 to go at halftime. Just a reminder, the Nissan Halftime Report straight ahead with Kevin Frazier, Kellen Winslow, and Artie Gigantino. They'll talk about that Oklahoma comeback down in College Station, Texas. Plus, the battle for the SEC East is underway. All that coming up on the Nissan Halftime Report in 1.29 plus a commercial. You have plenty of time here. You always talk about the two-minute drill. Here you want to work the middle of the field. First down, stops the clock. Beasley sees the blitz. The Morgan slips the tackle. Running room. Goodbye. Morgan electrifies the crowd, and the Wildcats have the lead. See, there's excessive celebration. Why don't they just call this delay a game, make it five yards? I mean, that's a fantastic play Absolutely. by Quincy Morgan. The team is jacked up. The crowd is jacked up. Don't take the fun out of college football. Five-yard penalty for delay a game is enough here. Not a 15-yard penalty. Well, you and I saw that happen to A&M today against Oklahoma. They got hit a couple of times on it. Quincy Morgan, the senior out of Garland, Texas. Remember a couple weeks ago I said he blurs the line between running back and wide receiver. Could see why on that touchdown. Able to break touch, break tackle, stay on his feet, and then with the ultimate speed to get in the end zone. What this amounts to now is a 35-yard extra point. 
Ball is spotted at the 25-yard line. No problem for Jamie Ream. Quincy Morgan with the touchdown reception. Jonathan Beasley threw it. His 15th of the year. What a job by Morgan. There's a little S on his chest under under that jersey. Quincy Morgan, Superman. It, 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 here's a guy, 6'3, 215 pounds, a legitimate 4'4, maybe even a little faster in the 40. Mm -hmm. I think he may be able to find employment in the fall next Sunday. I think he's going to be playing on Sundays. But Beasley with his 12th touchdown of the year from the receiving end. Lockett leads Kansas State in their history back in 95. He had 13, so he's just one away from Aaron Lockett's big brother now in the NFL. And he's been able to come up with the big play tonight, the diving catch, the catch on third, 24, that 50-yarder. First play after you get a bad punt. Once again, special teams. That's right. Giving the impetus for the scoring play. They knew that Scobie, Beasley, and Morgan had a step up big tonight, and they have so far. On the kick, it is Joe Walker, and he slips and sits on his fanny at the 18-yard line. Next weekend, it's a Pac-10 showdown on Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday. Rose Bowl hopes are on the line as in-state rivals collide. Washington squares off against Washington State in the Apple Cup, or you'll be able to see USC and UCLA. Tune in to see who will go to the granddaddy of them all. It all begins on the college football pregame show, 1130 Eastern, 830 Pacific, next Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Nebraska with a minute and 12 to work with. 80 yards away from Pater. Kansas State has done an excellent job on the option tonight. That time, John Clanton, the sophomore out of Glendale, Arizona, who's probably the quickest lineman, made the stop. We talked about Pierce, number 56, the redshirt freshman. Phil Bennett says it gives us a more physical presence up front. You see him taking on Tony Finotti. Finotti goes about 340 pounds. Pierce, 250. Pierce does a nice job in getting his pad level lower. Once you get that pad level lower, you'll win the battle nine times out of ten. Crouch already with 11 rushes. This time he's going to put it up. Hit as he throws. Has a man nuke him, but it's intercepted. just enough so that the ball can't get out there and a nice job by Jeremetrius Butler becoming the receiver at the tail end of the play. Bobby Newcomb needs to do a little better job. He needs to become the defender mm -hmm. and try and break that play up. This is a quick strike offense by Kansas State. 30 seconds is an eternity. Beasley looking for more. Again, Morgan, running room, has a wall. Gets up to the 49-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds by Scott Shanley. The best thing about the jailbreak screen or the slip screen is it gives the offensive lineman a chance to get down the field. Milford Stevenson, look at him coming up off the ground to get the second block on Randy Stella. He had already knocked him down once. Stella, good hustle to get up off the ground. But Stevenson doing the double hustle, getting up and getting the second block on Stella. It'll be second and one. Nine seconds off the clock. 21 left in the half. Beasley pump fakes. Looking deep. Has to scoop. 
scramble. Has a man. Incomplete. Shad Meyer, the big tight end. Or Rock, Rock Cartwright, I should say. The fullback. Nice job on the concept of the play there. They're going to fake, fake that jailbreak screen to Morgan in hopes that the defensive secondary comes up. Troy Watchorn, number 42, stays in deep center field. They don't have it there. Beasley moves around. Sees Cartwright. Probably the smart thing to do there is just throw the ball away or to run it, get the positive yardage. 12 seconds on the clock. Brandon Clark into the ball game. He's split out on the near side. Nebraska comes with the blitz. Beasley's chased. Scrambling, throwing, incomplete with seven seconds left to play in the first half. Pass intended for Martez Wesley. Once again, Nebraska putting the pressure on. They've already sacked Beasley twice. Boy, if you're Kansas State, you have to be feeling pretty good about yourself right now. You have special team breakdowns. Your defense is playing outstanding. And you will probably go in with the lead at halftime. And, and you know what, Ron Hudson, the offensive coordinator, normally they want to get down in the locker room and get with their guys. He's having to call plays to the very end. And it, it's a long haul to get down. He, he gets first break of the elevator. You know, guys That's are right. coming from the luxury suite. You wait for those coaches to get down. He's going to sprint into that locker room, and he's going to divide the second-half game plan in about 90 seconds. On fourth and one, they're kicking it away. Almost fumbled again by Joe Walker. And that will be the end of the first half. Kansas State has led at halftime eight times this year. They have never lost this season when they had the lead in intermission. And right now they lead 17-14 to over the number four ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers. The rain has stopped. The crowd is pumped. Nobody is feeling the cold in Manhattan at this point. And Eric Clemens is with Bill right. Snyder now. All right, Coach, you got off to a bad start with that punt being blocked, but you really got momentum back. Your assessment of the first half. Well, you know, we're still not playing. We're playing well on defense and offense. We just can't get some rhythm into what we're doing right now. We've thrown the ball around a little bit, but we haven't been able to run the ball. We need to be able to run the ball to have some success in this ball game. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Bill Snyder's team up 17-14 at the break, thanks in a large part to Quincy. Nebraska, well, they've made some opportunities in the special teams there. That's what's kept them in this ball game. And Nebraska will receive the second half kickoff, and it is Joe Walker from the one. Up to the 17, he is tripped up, and that's where Nebraska will begin the second half of play. Eric Clemens, you had a chance to spend some time with Frank Solich at halftime. What were his thoughts? I sure did, uh, Brian, and Frank Solich showed me a couple things. One, that it all, his offense has to sustain something and really get that power ground game going. They don't want to really go away from it and force Crouch to become purely a passer. Secondly, even though his defense has played well, he's got to keep people on their feet. That means a lot of guys change shoes, guys. <laughs> well, they average about 300. 71 yards rushing a ball game and in the first half they had 51 the Huskers Crouch keeps it looking for a block gets one crosses the 20 up to maybe the 21 yard line well the first half possessions for the Huskers look like this one touchdown a missed field goal the rest zero see the lack of yardage they had nice one touchdown drive 56 yards on that one drive and that drive was aided by the roughing the punter right. call so once again special teams coming into play but you would think that the nebraska offensive line would begin to dominate the defensive line of kansas state but the k-state line has done a tremendous job play action crouch has some running room holding on to the football pass one-handed incomplete Intended for John Gibson, the senior out of Papillon, Nebraska. Frank Solich really believes in power football and option football. You're down by three points. You must continue to pound the ball away because now you're in third and seven. That's not where you want to be. You're playing into Phil Bennett's hands. He's just waiting to get in, to get the right personnel in. And look at the conversions. Under third and seven, one for one. Above third and seven, if they don't get it done. Two wide receivers to the left. Third and six. Crouch has the time over the middle. Incomplete. Pass 
Yates intended for Bobby Newcomb. Derek Yates, the junior out of Houston. A little time at Coffeyville Community College with the hit. Newcomb dropped it. And we saw John McGraw, number 38, go out in the first series. Derek Yates comes in. He's been in the ball game since the beginning. That time he gets a terrific hit on Bobby Newcomb. Newcomb could have come up with that play. Could have made a tough catch over the middle. Instead, it gives the momentum to Kansas State. Now they haven't been able to get the ball to Bobby Newcomb today. Hayden Phil handles the high snap. A low end-over-end -end kick. Hits Kansas State. The ball is free, but the Wildcats recover it. There is Newman. Got back down on it. Hit Demarcus Fagans in the back. Newman, fastest player on the team, saw that. Covered the ball up well. 29 yards on the kick. Let's take a look at the numbers from the first 30 minutes of play, and that tells the story. You see the huge passing yardage. You expect Kansas State to be able to outpass Nebraska, but it also came in the way of big plays, many of them to Quincy Morgan. If I'm Craig Bowl in the second half, I double-team number five wherever he goes. Lockett moving around, they keep it on the ground, and Scobie slips and falls, loss of two on the play. You know what, that's inexcusable in the first half. I can understand a guy slipping, you wore the wrong shoes, but you've been out there for 30 minutes of football. You go in at halftime and say, okay, where are my rain shoes? Where are the wet weather shoes? I need those. That's not even a tough cut. He should be able to keep his feet a little better than that. Well, this is a defense that gave up over 340 yards passing to Iowa State after the Missouri game. The Nebraska coaches went back to the drawing board and try to simplify their defense a little bit. But tonight they're being picked apart by Jonathan Beasley and Quincy Morgan. The pump looking for Morgan. Morgan was held up by the play. Still makes the catch. Inside the 20, inside the 15. And he grabs his back on the play. Another huge pickup of 40 yards for Quincy Morgan. Quincy Morgan looks like he's hurting a little bit, but he's hurting Nebraska more on this play. There's nothing there, nothing at all. DeJuan Gross has the coverage, just a fantastic catch and run after the play, and good hustle by Joe Walker and get back in this play. See, Quincy Morgan one-on-one, -on -one, hard fight, a little chicken scratch here and there. And like I said, good hustle by Joe Morgan, by Joe Walker. And then the corners again being picked up. Scobie, the left side. Crowd will follow behind the blocks of Stevenson and Evie. We'll keep an eye on Morgan, who already has six catches, 187 yards, not a bad average. Yeah, and what you want down here in the red zone is you want a key buster. And by that, I mean you want to do something a little different offensively than what you normally do. What they normally do in the red zone, they put the ball in the hands of Jonathan Beasley. 16 rushing touchdowns this season. I expect it, you expect it. Craig Bolt knows that Jonathan Beasley on the option. Even when you spread the team out, they want to run him on the option. Morgan, second consecutive seasons, over 1,000 yards receiving. Beasley looks right, looks left. In trouble, still looking, still looking. Throws in the corner of the end zone, incomplete. He's out of bounds. Intended for Aaron Lockett. Good, solid coverage by the Nebraska secondary. Brandon Clark, number 45, is in for Quincy Morgan. He's big, he's fast, and he's trying to move around and get over. Dewan Gross is sticking right with him. The hardest thing to do for a defensive back is stay with a guy when you have a mobile quarterback who's making something out of nothing, or at least trying to make something out of nothing. Well, since midway through 93, these Kansas State Wildcats, 1-11 versus top 10 opponents. Five of the losses were to Nebraska. The only victory over a number six Kansas team. Beasley, time, end zone, incomplete. Lockett tried to stretch out that 5-7 frame. He needed another foot and a half. You had Morgan coming across on the shallow crossing route. If you're going to hit him, you must hit him right away because he can run after the catch. Boom, stick the ball on him, get the ball right there. He's open in the middle of traffic. Eyes had transferred already to the back of the end zone. He was trying to hit Lockett. You see the eyes off of Morgan. He's trying to go to Lockett in the back of the end zone. That ball just a little too high for Lockett. And he continues to hold his back as Jamie Rehm will attempt a 27-yard field goal. And the kick is good. Re 
team with the field goal. They strike first in the second half, and the Kansas State lead is stretched to six. KSU Stadium, a KSU Stadium record crowd of over 53,000 on hand. And right now, the number 16 Wildcats lead by six. Plenty of time left in this football game. This is the kind of game is 41 yards, six plays on that scoring drive that you will not say it's over till the gun sounds. I think AM found that out today at Oklahoma. He went up by 10. A lot of people felt that game was in the books. From the three, Randy Stella. He's tripped up before he gets to the 20 yard line. Now, what made that field goal so important by Jamie Ream? Watch this hold. And if you're wondering who has the best hands on the team, well, it's the guy who holds for the kicker. Mike Rosnick, a, a backup kicker himself. Hunter does a nice job in getting that ball down, and it is about as close as it comes. <laughs> he almost got his fingers taken off. And it's cold night to be down there with just your fingers. He's making sure that those little pinkies stay warm on the sideline. Good job by Rosnick out of Olathe, Kansas, in Nebraska. One of, those, one of those tricky formations. You got Newcomb right up there. And the fumble. Ball is that loose. Out. Kansas State's got it. Dan Alexander not used to taking the handoff from the fullback position. He's an eye back. Sometimes you get a little too cute with what you're trying to do offensively, and you cross yourself up. Great pressure from Monty Beisel. He comes right off the edge. But like I said, you practice things all year. Your guy's back in the eye back. Now you go for a little wrinkle. It's a little misty down here. The ball's a little wet. And you have a bad handoff. He never had it. Well, that ball's all the way up on the shoulder pad. It's not down in the belly. You have to put in the soft part to be a good handoff. And Beasley going for it. Calls his own number straight ahead. Inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. Nebraska cannot continue to make these mental errors and that type of error. They're they still have an outside chance at a national championship, but that will be dissolved if they can't come back in this football game. Beasley started this ball game two out of eight. He has improved markedly since then, and his targets have been exclusively the wide receivers. That one pass to Scobie when he was lined up at the wide receiver position. Now might be a good time to hit a tight end, but the tight ends happen to be on the sideline right now. Keep an eye on Quincy Morgan, the bottom portion of your screen. Scobie, left side, down to the 10-yard line. Carlos Pope, the senior out of Rockford, Illinois, on the stop. As you might expect, a lot of pads popping tonight. And Carlos Polk leading the charge. And Carlos Polk had an ankle injury early in the season. He's back healthy 100%. He had a couple of teammates that, you know, it still looks like you're limping around. He said, you know what, I just walk funny. Don't worry about the way I walk <laughs> because I can run and hit. And he, he's back. You know, he just missed that buttness award final thing. But right. this guy, if he had stayed healthy, I think he would have gotten that award. On fourth and one, they're not going to get it. On third and one, I should say, they don't get it. Scobie is tripped up. Great job by Troy Watchorn, the senior out of Columbus, Nebraska, who's come out of nowhere to become quite a star on this defensive side of the football. And the funny thing about Watchorn, he's inserted into the lineup when they expect the pass. But a very instinctive player there he is. He sees the run, and he balances off well. He gets his shoulder square so the running back can't juke him out. And now Jamie Ream called back to try another field goal. Mike Rosnick, the holder, they'll mark this one right at the 20, a 30-yarder. And Wilson Thomas, number nine, has been close to blocking them all at the middle jumper. The snap, the kick. Did it, does it sneak in? And it does. Just gets in the left upright, and Jamie Ream gives them something to walk away from after the fumble. Kansas State leads by nine. The sleet has started to fall in Manhattan, Kansas, but the Kansas State faithful, they don't even feel it. Their team's leading 23-14. Plenty of time left with 9-11 left in quarter number three. Along with Eric Clemens and James Lofton, I'm Ron Thulin. Jamie Ream has done his job tonight. 
with the field goals. Newcomb and Walker back at the three-yard line. Green the driving kick. Walker lets it fly into the end zone. Eric Clemens, the weather looks like it's really taking a turn for the nasty. What's it like down there? Uh, yeah, a little sleet is falling, and we have little ice crystals, I guess, down here on the field. As for the Nebraska sideline, a lot of guys looking up at the scoreboard, kind of shaking their heads in disbelief at the ineffectiveness of the Nebraska offense, especially with that power running game, how they usually pound the ball right up the middle for several yards of carry. Haven't been able to do that, Ron, so far against the tough defensive line of Kansas State talk about exactly what's happening here for the Nebraska offense. Crouch keeps it, pitches, nothing doing. Kansas State is there for the challenge again. Ben Lieber from that linebacker spot, and he is down. James, you and I have talked about it during halftime. Why, in your opinion, Nebraska not able to do anything well, offensively? Well, you can talk about footing, and you see wide receivers slip and do stuff like that. Well, the offensive linemen aren't getting the great traction that they're used to getting. And Kansas State is lining up nine guys in the box. They are daring Nebraska to throw the ball on, on first down. Look at that box. Nine guys right there in that box, and then one on one on the outside against the wide receiver. Straight ahead of running. Well, Dominic Riola is one of the four finalists for the Lombardi Finals, but Dominic has his hands full tonight. Hey, he really does. What they've decided to do, Phil Bennett, says we're going to put a guy on Riola's nose because he's best when he's uncovered. He pulls, he has the speed of a running back, he gets to the outside well, and he normally likes to also kind of clip at the back of the heels of the defensive tackles who are away from him. But when you line someone up on him, that kind of neutralizes his biggest strength. Kansas State bringing in a couple of extra defensive backs. Crouch on third and ten. Going deep for Davison. Floats the ball up, and it's incomplete. Carter on the coverage. And we'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching the Detroit Pistons and the Indiana Pacers as Isaiah Thomas's Pacers get another victory tonight. We're in Manhattan Kansas, where the temperature is in the low to 30s, high 20s, it's sleeting, and along with James Lofton and Eric Clemens, we welcome you to Wagner Field, where a record crowd is on hand for Kansas State and Nebraska. You see the score, you see the time, and it has been a dandy so far. Nebraska has been not been able to move the football tonight, and that has been the key. The ball is on the ground after the punt, still kicking it around, and I think Kansas State has it. David Allen on the return. We take a timeout, 7.29 left in the third. Kansas State leads by nine. Kansas State ranked as high as number two this year. Right now, they're the number 16 team in the country. They lead the number four team in the country. 23-14, the Big 12 North Division title on the line. Lock it in motion. Beasley, play action. Looking for Morgan. Has him open. Gets it to him. Knocked away at the last minute. Nice play by Keo Craver. He had Morgan for a second. Yeah, and a nice pattern crossing both wide receivers you get. Lockett coming in motion. He heads up the field. He's going on the deeper cross. Quincy Morgan on the shallow cross. Nice job by Keo Craver closing on the ball. Beasley trying to stick it right on him instead of throwing it out in front, but Keel Craver showing some good catch-up speed in that instance. Jonathan Beasley with that big play mentality. Second and ten. Time, time to give it to the Rock. Rock Cartwright. From the shotgun. Lock it. Going over the middle. Beasley going deep again for Martez Wesley. And it is incomplete. Wesley had it for a moment. Deion Booker coming over to knock it away. Nice. But that ball floated. But a nice job by Booker coming out of center field. And when you watch the protection up front, Beasley had time to look all over the field. You cannot redirect yourself when it's slippery out. You see Van den Bosch trying to get back in the flow of things. Once you make a cut, if you don't have your chin over your knee, you're going to slip down. 
Well, Booker could have picked that one off. Well, Booker had this ball. He goes up yeah. for it than Wesley does. Third down and ten. Nebraska showing blitz, five on the line. And this is where they like that screen. This is the fall off man, Stella. He's responsible for it. Beasley looking in the zone, being rushed. Dumps it off into the flat. Pass is complete to the tight end. Chad Meyer, the senior out of Pittsburgh, Kansas. You're about a yard short. It's a little long for a field goal to be about a 55-yard yeah. field goal attempt. If you punt the ball away here, you can pin them inside the 10-yard line. A nice little pooch kick. I think it's time to go field position. Well, you can get a little too cute. This is less than a yard. Now you're going to say, okay, Nebraska, we're going to match our power against your power, and we think we can get it tonight. Greg Bowl, the defensive coordinator of Nebraska, thought that Kansas State would try to go power on power to establish the line. One of the things that Nebraska does really well is a quick snap when you get someone in the neutral zone. Fourth down and less than a yard. Trying to get Nebraska to jump off. Beasley lunging forward, and that'll be a first down. Beasley is the master at the line of scrimmage. I would have bet you a nickel that once he got up there under the center and he started barking the signals that they were just going to try and fake the snap. Not snap it, get him to jump offside. Now, I may have spoke too quickly because the officials did not give a very lenient spot on that ball. I don't know. I'm using my uh, 2015 x-ray double vision. Looks like he got it just by the tip of the football. I think you're right. First and ten line by Verizon shows that our line is accurate. It is a first down. Sometimes you just are a little afraid to trust the technology. <laughs> I, I, I've seen the guy who operates that line in the truck. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little scary. As Beasley spent some time on the sideline with Bill Snyder, now he comes back in. They've got their three receivers to one side. I mentioned earlier that they like the screen here. You can also you can run the wide receiver screen or the bubble screen out this direction. A crossing pattern looking for Morgan going over the middle. They're going deep. Has a man Whoa. knocked away. Nice defensive effort by Walker and Keo Craver. Keo Craver laying out at the last minute. Martez Wesley had a step and a half on him. The ball came out a little flat. Johnson Beasley trying to read the coverage. Doesn't get it out early. And a nice breakup by Keo Craver. Now, is Kansas State getting a little gutty instead of trying no, to grind no. it out? This is their style of play. They like to run the football. Play action passing is big. Now they're faced with second and ten. They throw the ball up again. That's where they've had success tonight. When you drop down Carlos Polk in the middle line, it's hard to run in between the tackles. Braver showing blitz. He's up on the line. Showing it again, and here he comes. Beasley steps up, lets it fly, pass in the flat to Morgan, incomplete. See, that's, that's the pass that you need. You need that one because then you have third and one. And that's the play that really keeps the chains. Well, sure, we've seen the spectacular from Superman at night. We've seen the diving catches. We've seen the great run after the catch. And that's a tough catch right there because you're trying to lay out and you want to get that ball on your hand. He let that ball get into his chest and it's going to bounce away nine times out of ten when it hits you in the shoulder pads. And you can see what they've done on third and plus seven, and, only and three of eight. But that's not bad. That's not bad conversion for that down and distance. On third and ten, Beasley has some time. Gets hit as he throws, oh. has a man wide open, and he overthrows Martez Wesley. Vandenbosch put the pressure on Beasley, and he felt it. Beasley's first read was to Quincy Morgan, trying to go in that direction. You're getting a great matchup outside between Milford Stevenson and Vandenbosch because he has time to throw that football. He gets it away. He just doesn't see it early enough. Nebraska has blocked one punt and went for a touchdown in the opening drive. They came close on another, and they've peeled back since then. Travis Brown, the numbers on him, not a good night. And if I'm Kansas State, I, I just let this clock run down because yeah. I can use the extra five yards here. Right now, the ball is spotted at the 37. There's three on the play clock, and that's exactly what they're going to do. So they'll back him up five more yards with 6.22 left in the third, leading by nine. But see, the, 
the defensive unit should have the option here to decline this. Right. Because it, it's fourth and ten. It's not like you're going to jump off sides and give them the first down. Well, they mark it off. Now Travis Brown, the sophomore out of Overland Park, Kansas. Came into the game averaging just a shade over 40 a game, but he's improved his average the last couple of weeks, almost up to 42 a game. He's got double coverage on the left. There we have people jumping. And that's Nebraska trying to take that five yards back from him. That's a smart play right there. Move him up closer. Make it a tougher angle for the punter. That is pretty smart. Or it's even smarter by K-State. I'll start. <laughs> well, offense. well, they're going to back up again. Five penalty. Repeat fourth down. That will try it again. And I'm sure the people that are sitting in the stands freezing want this thing to but get going. The difference is now you put a rush unit out on the field. Mm -hmm. The guys are going to come off the corner a little harder to make it tough for the punter to step in this direction and kick to his left. Nebraska jumping around on the line. Fourth and 20. Here comes the snap. The kick almost blocked, and a penalty flag is going to be thrown. So Nebraska with another special team mistake, and this will go for not Joe Walker. Some running room down out of bounds at the 27-yard line, and we're going to have another penalty. Two flags are thrown. Walker was out of bounds, and they shoved him, and Bill Snyder does not like it. Now this is going to be interesting. You got a push in the back on Thane Burbick, number 34. And he's over the boundary. Doesn't push him hard, but he pushes he him just enough on a slippery surface to knock a guy into a bench or knock him into a crowd of players. If he's out of bounds, that should be a dead ball foul. So you get the first penalty during the course of play. Roughing the kicker, you get a first down, and then you get the mark off later against K-State. Roughing the kicker on Nebraska. Then we have a dead ball, personal foul on Kansas State. We'll penalize 15 yards, Oklahoma, automatic. Okay. <laughs> And then a 15 yard penalty. Poor Steve Oh, boy. It'll be he's, there first down. I think he's a little cold. It is cold <laughs> tonight. But the result of it is Kansas State gets the ball back. They'll be penalized 15 yards after they get the ball back. Right. You've got a future as an official. You yeah. realize that? I, and I think I'd be able to tell you which three teams are playing tonight. <laughs> it's Kansas State, Nebraska, and the winner plays Oklahoma. That's what he meant to say. Of all the years I've seen Steve call games, I think that's the first time I've ever seen him do that. He wants he wants to redeem himself. He's given the call one more time just, just to make sure he realized he, he messed up. Well, the bottom line is Kansas State will have the football. They'll have excellent field position again. They will be in Cornhusker territory. They'll mark it at about the 46-yard line of Nebraska. Okay, and in the last drive, we saw the deep crossing routes, the deep passing game by Kansas State. What worked well for them late in the first half? The short crossing routes, getting the ball in the hands of Quincy Morgan and Aaron Lockett underneath the coverage, and getting the ball out of the hands quickly of Jonathan Beasley. Now you have Morgan wide to the right, Scobie in the backfield. Cartwright joins them. And they're playing up on Quincy Morgan, trying to bump him with Keo Craver. But they run it. Scobie lowers the shoulder, puts I, it down. I, I love that. I love that at the tail end of a play because it sends a message. Nebraska comes in here as the big bad wolf. Kansas State, well, they've beaten them 29 out of the last 30 times. Well, Scobie says, hey, I wasn't even born when you guys used to beat us. I'm going to lay a lick on your guy at the tail end of the play. I'm not going to take the blow. He is considered the biggest junior college recruit this program has picked up since Michael Bishop came here from Blinn Junior College. He's learning how to run vertically. That's something the coaches have really tried to work with him on. Lockett slips as he goes in motion. Has the football. He makes his way down to about the 32-yard line. Pickup of about four on the play. It, you know, it's cold tonight. You don't think of fatigue being a factor. You've run Scobie wide. You run a, a mini reverse to Aaron Lockett. 
This defense for Nebraska has been out here the majority of the third quarter. Mm -hmm. I see guys standing around the huddle with their hands on their hips. Granted, the offensive guys have been in the same number of plays. Nebraska, the black shirts aren't used to being on the field this much. Time of possession is always in the favor of the Nebraska Pornhub. Both Frank Solich and Bill Snyder said that was a concern. Beasley on second and five, pass drop. Quincy Morgan bottled it. The only thing you jump for is to get a better view of your neighbor's pool in his backyard. <laughs> you don't need to jump for a ball that's going to hit you in the stomach. You think Quincy heard you? Yeah, I think I'll tell Quincy. You know, Quincy Morgan has had a great game. He's made big plays. It's the little plays that, the, that would have given them a first down. Now it's third and five. Now you start to roll the dice. It's Ron Hudson, his three wide receiver set against the pass rush of Nebraska. Craig Bowl, is good. he should send the house here. You bring everybody and you bring their buddies too. But Nebraska brings by to look for the screen to Scobie and he is tackled immediately. Nice effort by Nebraska's Randy Stella. He smelled that one from the get-go. Lauren Kaiser was also in on it. That's the second time they've run that play to Scobie. You're in field goal range here. You've got a good angle. A right-footed kicker is going to work his ball from right to left. Just watch Jamie Ream kicking before the game. He was hitting him from 55 yards, no problem. You've got enough breeze at your back. Just want to get this ball up quickly so it doesn't get blocked. This will be a 49-yarder, his longest of the year from the right hash mark. It's a fake. It. Was Rosnick down? Oh, I, I tell you, I don't know if I mean, the ground see, caused the you fumble. You see people pointing at the ground time and time again. Yeah. He gets spun around, and before his knee is able to hit the ground, the ball comes out. Yeah, well, nice Walker job got by it. Scott Shalen. Gets that, but you know what? That's as good as a punch. 49-yard field goal, a little risky. They go for the gamble there. Now, Nebraska, play Ball action loose. pass, or do you go back to the power game? You're down by nine. You've got a little bit under 20 minutes to play. You bring in the horses and say, we're going to stop it. Crouch keeps it. He breaks one over the 25, up to the 28-yard line. You cannot commit 11 guys within six yards of the line of scrimmage and have a good heart pattern with Eric Crouch running the football. Absolutely. I mean, he is going to make you get a little nervous because you've committed everyone up close. It's up to Jerry Cooper. We talked about Captain Detroit. Jared Cooper, in this instance, he can take over the ball game, forcing and covering the tight end. They spring out the action, and he is dropped back at the 24-yard line. And you hear it? Jared Cooper, he gets my Captain Detroit Award tonight. You know, that's exactly what the coaches wanted to do on Eric Crouch. Make him go east-west on that option because that allows Kansas State to utilize their speed on the defensive line. But the way they're able to do it, the way that they're able to commit nine people is the guys on the outside have to be able to cover one-on-one. -on -one. Jeremetrius Butler, Dyshot Carter, they haven't challenged them much, but they've been there every step of the way. Loss of three, second and 13. Crouch going down the middle, and it is incomplete. Intended for Wilson Thomas, the sophomore out of Omaha. And you see the middle of the field open. Cooper's down on the far side of the field. He was locked up in coverage against Wistrom one-on-one. -on -one. It's a guy who they can't afford to lose tonight. You've already lost John McGraw. Just saw Cooper come up with a huge play. He's been there. He's been filling the gap. You don't really have a guy to fill in for this person right now. Well, there are no game-breaking receivers on Nebraska's team. They're more like possession receivers as Cooper comes out. But Eric Crouch has only completed one pass. It's been to Matt Davison. And one of their big guns has been Tracy Wistrom. Put him on a milk carton because he's disappeared tonight. It'll be third down and 13. And, and you, you need a timeout here. You've lost two safeties. So it, it changes your nickel package. And Phil Bennett is smart here. Get the guys over to the right. sideline. We got third and a bunch. Third and 13 or 14 for this team is like third and a country mile. Keep the receivers in front of them. 
Al Tomorrow on America's favorite pregame show. JB, Terry, Howie, Chris are joined by Jillian Barbary, the weather girl. Along with Jimmy Kimmel, the sarcastic sage. It's all part of the wildest NFL pregame show on television. Fox NFL Sunday tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, only on Fox. And of course, the NFL following the pregame show. Check your local listings for the games and the times in your area. Go for Nebraska right now. Facing third down and 13. 3.51 left in the third quarter. They took the lead at 14 to 7. The Bra Kansas State has come storming back to take the lead 23-14. The power game has not been there for the Huskers. And, and when you go to the passing attack, you have three receivers who come into this ball game with 17 receptions. Matt Davison, Tracy Wistrom, and Bobby Newcomb. When Solich talked about each one of the three, he said Wistrom is great against play action. Well, you're not going to play action anybody and pull them on third and 13. Bobby Newcomb, he liked that little jailbreak screen with he said Matt Davidson is our best route runner, so I would think that he'd look for Matt Davidson down here at the bottom. Davidson to Newcomb, bottom of your screen, overthrown. Bobby Newcomb, the intended receiver. Nashad Carter was on the coverage, and that ball's just getting away from Eric Crouch today. Another excellent job by the Wildcat defense. You know, you must be alternating punt receivers. It looks like it's Aaron Lockett's chance. I would still have two guys back there. The ball's been on the ground once by each of them. Lockett has fumbled one, and also David Allen has mishandled a punt. I'd rather have two guys back there for a little security. Absolutely. Lockett's already returned two to the house this year versus Ball State and Louisiana Tech. Aiden Felt, nice kick, back and lock it up. At the 22. Look out. Big gap. Fakes on Hayden oh, Felt. Flag thrown. Penalty flag is down as he takes it home. But the flag is at the 35-yard line. And the flag came from the KSU side of half court. On the other side of the 50, it was thrown high and long. Somebody way down the field saw something wrong that went the other way. It's going to bring this fine return back. Heavy on the receiving team, on the return, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. 54 yards on the kick, 77 yards on the return, goes for naught. They're back in Kansas State up. They'll have the football. Three twenty-seven, three twenty-nine to play in quarter number three. Kansas State with the football. We talked about Kansas State's balanced attack under Bill Snyder, but tonight it has been all throwing the football. And you can see this is a team that doesn't get penalized a whole lot. Last year they had the most in the Big 12. This year the fewest. But tonight they've been the victim. Beasley calls his number. Penalty flag thrown again as he crosses the 40 up to the 42-yard line. And another holding call. It's not going to make the hometown fans happy. You get back-to-back -back holding calls thrown right in the middle. Randall Cummins, the safe, the center, got up limping a little bit. I don't know if he held somebody incorrectly, and the guy Holy. twisted him around a little bit. Offense, 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. When you get a guy like Carlos Polk, number 13, up in the middle of the line, he's shooting gaps, he's stunning, he causes a lot of those problems. I'm surprised that we haven't seen more holding calls the way that Polk has mm -hmm. been blitzing through the interior of the line. Carlos coming off his best game of the year. He was unstoppable last week against Kansas. You see that little limp? He's just faking it. He just says it looks good. First down, 20 to go from the 24-yard line. Kansas State trying to get back to the running game. They think the ball was coughed up, but Scobie held on to it. I think the biggest concern for Kansas State right now, you have a great punt return call back. First down, you get a holding call. You can't let something bad happen now. The, the worst that you want from this drive is to be able to punt the ball away and get that field position battle back. You don't want to have a turnover here and give Nebraska a short field to work with. 
And it is second and 17. Three wide receivers to the left. Nebraska fakes the blitz. Beasley with time. Going long. That's going to be incomplete. See, the, the one thing I don't like about this, we got three guys 30 yards down the field in the same general area. Where's the check down guy? Where's the dump off to Rock Cartwright or throwing the ball to the tight end? Everybody's going deep. You got three guys going deep. Where's the underneath throw? Where's the throw here? Where's Cartwright going this way away from him? Because you got plenty of time. You have great pass protection, and you're trying to go deep, but you have two deep zone by Nebraska. Give me something short to work with the deep stuff. Now they're faced with third and 17. Three wide receiver set. Beasley feels the low snap, the pump fake, goes long, pass incomplete again. Intended for Aaron Lockett. So you know, Aaron Lockett's a small guy to try and get him the ball over the middle. Even if he catches it, those guys close in on him, they're, they're going to crush him. Send a bigger receiver down the middle. And the offensive linemen are frustrated now. They got a holding call granted, but you're just throwing the ball deep. Give us something to work with. Let us tee off on these guys a little bit. And the touchdown on the punt return called back. And now Brown, who has faced a lot of heat tonight from this Nebraska defense. And this special team, and they're jumping around again on the line. This time they peel it back. Off the side of his foot, and Nebraska will get excellent field position with 2.07 to play in the third. Next week at the Pac-10 Showdown on Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday, Rose Bowl hopes are on the line as in-state rivals collide. Washington squares off against Washington State in the Apple Cup, or you'll be able to see USC against UCLA. Tune in to see who will go to the granddaddy of them all. All begins with our college football pregame show at 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 Pacific, next Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Nebraska with excellent field position. They have to take advantage of it. They've been averaging just over a yard and a half on first down and not much better on that one. Buck Calder and Alexander have been quiet tonight. They have only gained 64 yards rushing the football. Once again, their average over 370 yards. Tops in college football the power game. They felt they had it last week. Did not have it against Oklahoma. Buck Calder and Alexander were stymied. Crouched down the line. They string him out. He squirts through a little bit of a hole. Down to the 45 of Kansas State. Two yards short of the first down. Brings up a third and two situation. One of the things I noticed early in the ball game is that the Nebraska offensive linemen were able to get the defensive linemen from Kansas State on the ground. Now you see the Kansas State defensive linemen, everybody running to the football. So they're getting away from those cut blocks at the line of scrimmage. Crouch dancing around, keeps it, and he is going to be short of the first down. Johnson there for the stop. He's the one who got the penetration. Normally the offensive line is getting some push on the line of scrimmage. This time they're getting blown up in the backfield. Hoxstein gets hit and Chris Johnson, number 36, number one, he beats the tight end. Then he beats the pulling guard. Then he wades through the fullback and then he unloads on Kraut. So he gets four Cornhuskers in one play. Well, Nebraska realizes the situation. They're going for it on fourth and two. Pulling his way. First down, Cornhuskers. That is the first solid run that Dan, or Carl Buckalder has had tonight. Yates came up to hold on and make the stop. now first and 10 on the Kansas State 39 yard line straight ahead running and again the K-State defensive line stepping up and that's the way the third quarter will come to an end Nebraska the number four team in the country still with a hope of a national title the Big 12 championship game on the line we have 15 minutes left and the Huskers head to the final quarter trailing by nine
Kansas State faithful just 15 minutes away from doing something they've only done once before since 68. That's beat Nebraska, but Nebraska has to play shutout football right now. And, and I don't want to be a master of the obvious, but Nebraska needs 10 points. Now, I'll give you how they need to do it. They need to stick with what they do best. Power football, option football, and just a little bit of play action passing. Frank Solich must stick to his guns and not get too cute trying to pass the ball on first down. Second down and seven. Straight ahead running and they blast right over the middle. Good solid yardage by Willie Miller, the fullback. He does not carry the ball that often. So much of the defense has been to stop Eric Crouch. See guys flowing to the outside. There are three players flowing to the outside following Eric Crouch and he's already given the ball up. He was a high school running back that had over 1,500 yards and 18 touchdowns his senior year, so he knows how to carry the football. Now they try the right side, and the Nebraska offensive lineman beginning to open up the holes. Dan Alexander on the carry. Talk about a size advantage. Well, Nebraska, almost everyone they play against, they're going to have a size advantage. But they use that size well. You see big guys who move well. Sure, they weigh a lot, but they're very active and 304 pounds. That may not seem huge in today's football, but they're very athletic guys. When you talk about Nebraska offensive linemen, you talk about guys who fight, fight, fight. On the pitch, trying the left side, breaking over, heading for Painter. Touchdown, Dan Alexander. Okay, number 38, Dan Alexander. And the Huskers are right back in this football game. You can get a defense back on their heels. They're attacking. You get a nice block by Volk, number 58. And then you get the kickout block on Lieber. That gives your running back, Dan Alexander, buck holder, a nice hole to run through. He's the faster of the two high backs, and he showed it on that touchdown run. His seventh rushing touchdown, and the Nebraska sideline has been given life. Josh Brown with the conversion, and we have a two-point ball game. Kansas State leads it 23-21. This year, outscoring opponents by almost 60 points this season. They've given up only three offensive touchdowns. So, obviously, Frank Solich, after that seven-play, 54-yard drive, and the touchdown feels pretty good. Dominic Riola, the center, one of the Lombardi finalists, right before they scored that touchdown, Riola was on the sideline, cheering his team on, trying to get the troops psyched up, and he's still doing it. Very quiet, unassuming type, right? Yeah, the, the unassuming Hawaiian. Somebody has to be the team leader. Sometimes you can look at the quarterback. He's involved in the game plan. Dominic Riola leads up front and by example. From the 17-yard line, nothing going on. Chris Clayman on the return. Eric Clemens, you're surviving the weather, I see. Yes, yeah, surviving the weather and really surviving the heat now being generated on this Nebraska bench. They exploded when the Cornhuskers really showed their best offensive drive of the night. The power run game worked. Miller almost broke one. Finally, they broke one for a touchdown with Dan Alexander. And now Dominic Griola, who has been taunting these Kansas State fans really all <laughs> evening long, has something to talk about now. And the last 13-54, I think we're going to see a real dog fight, fellas. I'll tell you, this game is far from over, but if you're a Kansas State fan, considering the history of this game between these two teams, you're definitely on the edge of your seat with only a two-point advantage. Scobie, right side, crosses the 30 up to the 33-yard line. Good, solid running by Josh Scobie. Carlos Polk on this stop. Play wide receiver, you want to block one of these two guys. Normally it's the first force, which you would think would be the up close guy. That time Aaron Lockett goes inside. He's going to block the deeper of the two. Josh Scobie is able to put his shoulder down and run over Keel Craver. And you got second and three. Continue to pound the football in between the tackles. Have confidence that your guys can get it done. And this is the situation that Craig Bull, defensive coordinator, did not want. He said, we're not good on a run pass option, except Carlos Polk says, forget about it. Take a seat, Mr. Scobie. You know, that's not somebody beating a block. 
That's poor recognition. You have John Robinson, number 70 at right guard, and Thomas Barnett, number 65. Those two guys have to block Polk. You know he's moving around. He's been doing it all day long. You're going to block down. Thomas Barnett just doesn't get it done, the right tackle. There's Craig Bowl, the defensive coordinator. Third and six on the play for Kansas State. The rain begins to fall again. Beasley, plenty of time. Now he has to scramble. Penalty flag is thrown. Beasley lets it fly, and it'll be incomplete. Vandenbosch lowered the shoulder again on Beasley and pops the pad out. See, I don't like that holding call. You have a defensive lineman who's quit his pass rush. The offensive lineman has locked on to him. He's had, he has the hands inside the framework of the body and when the quarterback runs away then you get a little hold Penalty. but he did release him. Offense. Penalties be crime. First down. He's had his pass rush stop right there. He's locked out. That is not holding. Well, he kept fighting. And now, Kansas State forced to kick it away. It's leading now here in Manhattan. Put back two guys deep. Smart move by Nebraska so that they can feel the punt. Walker and Newcomb back. A spiraling kick. It is Walker. Oh, he got, got a wall. He got a hold. Throws it number five. Holds his man in the back. And we do have a penalty flag thrown, and that will go for naught. So both teams, special teams, have been a thorn in the side. Kansas State had a 77-yard punt return, nullified by a hold, and now this one will come back. On the receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. You're going to see the hold outside DeWan Gross. He's uh -oh. going to grab him right now. You know, he doesn't stop right there. Now he's holding him again. Puts that arm around him and hooks him. I don't think he was trying to hold him. I think he was trying to get his hands in one of those hand warmers he's Trying to in warm there. his hands yeah. in his muff, huh? You know, now Phil Bennett has a challenge. He's had nine guys up in the box the entire ball game. You got gassed the last time out. There are your nine guys in the box. And Nebraska's rushing attack looked good at the end of the third, beginning of the fourth quarter. Plenty of time left. And they'll go back to the power game, straight ahead, running again. Got to knock them backwards once you make that initial contact. That is where Dan Alexander is so good. You can talk about, you know, average per carry. But when you look at statistics, he gets almost 50% of his yards after the first contact. That time, he stopped for what should have been a two-yard gain. He grinds it out. He gets an extra three, four, five yards after the first contact. This is a team that has 74 yards rushing in the second half, only 51 in the first half. Again, the right side. The yards after contact again. Nearing the 50-yard line again is their horse, Dan Alexander. Now, Cooper had his chance. He had a chance to make the hit in the hole. Tony Finotti, number 77, is going to pull around. He's a left guard. He's going to lead it up through the hole. But it's right there. Cooper, come on, make that tackle. Rack up. I know he's a big guy, but you got to be able to wrap him up. And now Nebraska just doing what they've done best all year, just running the football. Keeping it on the ground again. And again, they still pick up yardage, despite the fact Mario Fadafehi and Warren Lott were holding on for dear life on Dan Alexander. Alexander closing in on 1,000 yards rushing this season. I think with that run, he went over 1,000. He did. He only needed 74. He's up to 78 tonight. 10.50 to play in the ball game. Nebraska a little long. He's getting his play. It doesn't give Krauss the time to audibleize the line of scrimmage. Straight ahead running, just powering. But if you're Nebraska, you didn't do it for two and a half quarters, and now you're doing it. But this is one of their 
uh, traditions. In the fourth quarter, they have worn people down, and that's where they get the majority of their yardage. They've been able to pop some big runs in this fourth quarter. I, I don't really believe that Kansas State is getting worn down. They're still pursuing. They're running after the plays. Well, it's just been, it seems like Nebraska, especially Dan Alexander, has turned it up a notch mm -hmm. in this fourth quarter. And Dominic Riola maybe getting on his guys on the sidelines has been the catalyst. And it's been a while since Eric Crouch attempted to throw the football. the Nebraska Cornhuskers getting guys off their feet. That time you're cutting guys at the line of scrimmage. You get nine guys up in the box. Riola reacted a little bit there. Showboat. You don't see a center showboat too often, but he earned it. Second touchdown run for Dan Alexander. His longest run of the evening. That covered 45 yards, putting him over 100 yards for the night. Extra points by number 26, Josh Brown. Russ Hoekstein led him, the senior out of Hardington, Nebraska, led the big offensive line charge, and that opened it up for Alexander, and Nebraska has taken the lead. Eric Clemens back here at Wagner Field where Nebraska is just going ahead. Their power running game working. Dominic Riola has been a key at the center spot. He told me by pointing at his heart, it's all right here, baby. It's all right here in the heart. That's what he says has keyed this Nebraska comeback here in the fourth quarter, guys. Well, the numbers bear it out. 140 yards rushing in the second half after just 51 in the first half. And that has given their defense a little life. Chase Long with the kick. Bouncing around. Lock it. Straight ahead running. Tripped up as he crosses the 25 up to about the 28-yard line. Let's go, but it's the big line up front of Nebraska doing the job. And you get Hockstein. He's going to pull and kick out. You kick out the small guys, but you want to get the big guys on the ground, and they do a great job of getting the defensive linemen and the linebackers off their feet. You know what? You just can't pursue well when you're on your butt. The big offensive line of the Huskers. Verizon presents first and ten all season long on Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday. Verizon making the world of communications a whole lot simpler. Now Kansas State finds themselves in a hole, something they haven't been in in a long time. It's the second quarter, but they go straight ahead. Rock Cartwright, the big fullback out of Conroe, Texas. And a nice change of pace by Ron Hudson, the offensive coordinator. Craig Bowl has gone to a two-deep look in his secondary, so you will not have the quick force. You see the deep guys, they're dropping back deep because they've been burned by the pass. Nice blocking up front by Barnett and Robinson on the right side, and Rock Cartwright just tumbling down the field. Kansas State success throwing the ball in the first half. Now they're going to the running game. Two heavyweights slugging it out in Manhattan. Two wide receivers to the left. Beasley play action. Going for the big one. Looking for Morgan. Incomplete. DeWan Gross was on the coverage. He's been beaten tonight a couple of times. But he gets a hand in on the football on that one. And, and that ball could have been thrown five yards further. Well, tonight on Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday, we've got the conclusion of our quadruple header. Number 10, Oregon State takes on Arizona in a Pac-10 showdown. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey standing by. It'll be coming up immediately following your game, our game, as we wrap up a full day of college football here on Fox Sports Net. Imagine the weather in Tucson a little different than here in Manhattan. Oh, uh, yeah, but it's a dry heat. <laughs> Second and 10 from the 48. Scobie into Nebraska territory, down to the Nebraska 48-yard line, pickup of four. Scobie has been the workhorse carrying the football tonight, coming off that four-touchdown performance against Iowa State. I think now you'll see what Ron Hudson feels like is his best offensive set. Third and seven, three wide receivers, one back, one tight end. Ron Hudson right there, done a nice job in mixing it up against this ball club, a little power running, 
some good play action, and he's taking his shots deep against this Nebraska unit. Morgan only one catch in the second half, wide to the left. Lock it in the slot. The rush, Beasley has time, and he is going to be dropped at the line of scrimmage. Morgan and Lockett were covered up by the Nebraska secondary. Well, you rush four guys, you drop seven back into coverage, and you've got underneath coverage because they have held deep. Nice job in pattern recognition there. You do have one guy who's open, but a quarterback doesn't have three eyes in his head, nor do they go in three different directions. And Joe Walker set to receive the kick on his own 11-yard line. Beasley was so effective in the first half throwing the football. Pooch kick. Walker chasing it down at the 15. And he is tripped up. Maybe got two on the return as the crowd here at Kansas State has gotten quiet. But there's still a lot of football to be played, and the home team trails by just five. Thulin. We have 8.07 left to play. The number four Frank Nebraska Cornhuskers have come alive in the second half. They lead it by five and they have the football. Again, the straight ahead power running and again, Nebraska picking up positive yardage. Dan Alexander, the workhorse. We opened the ball game. We talked about Nebraska gaining five yards on first down. For three quarters of football, they were unable to do that on first down, but they have been very effective in this fourth quarter. And you talk about running in between the tackles, they're running in between the guards right now. It is right up the gut, and the middle linebackers have to step up in this situation. That keeps you on schedule when it's second and five. This time, Kansas State up to the challenge. The purple jerseys surrounding. And Mario Fatafehi, we talked about running in between the guards. No, not this time. I'm getting this play. Willie Miller's my guy. When you run the option, I'm going to get him and stop it. Now, down the distance situation still favors Nebraska if Frank Solich will stick to what he says works best. Power football, option football. Well, because his defense has come alive. Third down and five. Inside of seven minutes to play. Only one wide receiver to the right. The pitch. Alexander is going to be stacked up, and he is going to lose a yard on the play. Terry Pierce, the red shirt freshman, made the initial hit. Monty Beisel cleaned it up. Talked about Terry Pierce last year while he was sitting out. He won the overachiever award. Here he's flowing, 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 takes on Willie Miller, and then gets in on the tackle. And as long as there is a purple shirt behind a ball carrier, he's not going to stick it up in there as hard as he would if there's a gap. Now it's time to field the punt. Hayden Felt on his eight-yard line. Lockett is back, and he's going to have to chase this one down. Throws up the fair catch side, and the penalty flag is going to be thrown. Nebraska looked like they were blocked into it, but the 45-yard kick will have a flag, and it's our infamous halo infraction. Randy Stella looked like he slipped. You know, if uh, our advertisers were smart, they'd have the Halo Infraction sponsored, you know? <laughs> this Halo Infraction sponsored by... Randy Stella is a heck of a ball player, though. You line him up at linebacker... Halo violation on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. First down. And then he's your bullet guy yeah. covering punt. So, obviously, he can hit and he can fly. Morgan only one reception in the second half. Lockett has not had a reception in the second half. And now Kansas State will go with a three wide receiver set. You can see the two deep appearance, two safeties back deep. Rock Cartwright, the only man in the backfield. And he has the football, and he is hit, but he gets away, breaks the tackle, crosses the 50 down to the 49-yard line. Sweeney wrapping him up. 13 yards on the carry. Finding a way to deal with Carlos Polk is tough. He shoots gaps. He gets in the backfield. Rock Cartwright says, hey, 
I didn't read this guy's press clippings. I didn't show up until August. I didn't have time to find out how good he was supposed to be. Breaks that tackle in the backfield. Picks up an important first down for an offensive unit that has struggled the last 15 minutes. And it begins to sleep again as we close in on five minutes to play. Beasley, play action being rushed from the backside. Throws in the pass. Oh, yeah. Interference intended for a locket. Gross is called for the pass interference. Think about 30 years ago, Bear Bryant said three things bad can happen when you throw the football. Get knocked down, intercepted, or pass interference. He didn't know pass interference was called against the defense. That's right. And now another penalty. Now they're calling it a hold. A hold. That's what they're calling. Maybe that hold is against Oklahoma. Holding <laughs> on the defense. 10-yard penalty. First down. Let me see. The ball's in the air. He jumps on his back. Hold it. Okay. Just a reminder, the Pac-10 game will come up immediately following our game, number 10, Oregon State and Arizona. That'll be coming up straight ahead. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey standing by for that ball game. We'll have some business to do in Manhattan. Here comes the blitz. Beasley lets it fly and is incomplete. Morgan was the intended receiver, but Beasley just threw that away to save his life. Yeah, good job. And talked about Randy Stella putting a quick heat on. Stella, six, what, six foot, 205 pounds, and with some speed. And that time, if he's unblocked, he's going to get to your quarterback before your quarterback can get the ball away. The Big 12 North title on the line. Nebraska five and a half away from being the representative in Kansas City. Taking on the winner of the South where Oklahoma is in the driver's seat. And you have three over two on this side, so maybe the one-on-one -on -one matchup is on top. And the sleet is really coming down. Beasley running around. Has some room inside the 30, inside the 25-yard line. I don't know what Beasley clocked in the 40 when they decided to run it early on. If it was 4-4-5 four, four, or whatever, that time Beasley dug down deep, found a little extra. We talked about Eric Crouch, I remember early in the season, about his gap speed. That time Beasley saw the gap and he turned on the speed. And there are lots of extra guys on the field. Sometimes they wear black and white. Carlos Folk was nice to him. They didn't give him a forearm shiver there. And then they run the football on the right side, and it is really coming down. The weather has turned for an absolute worst. Eric Clemens, how bad is it down there? Because it is really coming down. Well, I'll tell you what, the sleet is coming down a little bit, and if you look back, if you're a Kansas State receiver and you're looking back, depending on the way the wind is blowing, it kind of hurts when you look back into it. So if it comes down any harder, it might be difficult for one of those guys to look back and make a catch. We'll see what happens, guys. It only hurts, Eric, if you drop the ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's which, true. <laughs> which Smooth never did. Beasley calls his number straight ahead. Pulls his way to the 10. And that'll be a first down for Kansas State with 4.22 to play. You spread the defense out. You make the correct call. Ron Hudson, the offensive coordinator, A-plus on the last two calls with Jonathan Beasley taking off. He saw it on the scramble. He said, oh, Beasley's the guy. Put the ball in his hands. You don't risk an exchange. I would expect Beasley to carry the ball exclusively yes. the next couple of plays. They're running down on the play clock here. They still have three timeouts left in this ball game. Don't take the five-yard delay of game penalty here. First and goal from the 10, Scobie down to the seven-yard line. A field goal will not help them. And you want straight-ahead plays. When the field gets covered and gets slick, you can run in one direction. You see the white. You can see where the foot par marks have been on the field. You don't want to start something here and try and cut back because you'll just end up on your gluteus maximus. And it is amazing no one has left this stadium. Second and goal from the seven for the Wildcats. Down by five. And the right side of the Kansas State line, Thomas Barnett moved. The big right tackle. 
this point, Thomas Barnett is just hoping that they came across the line. Ooh. Barnett was po pointing to Carlos Polk and also to Joe Walker. It, what it does, it takes them out, almost out of a run mode here. You had the ball on the seven yard line, you're backed up second and goal from the 12 yard line. Now I look for my big play guy, who's also my most physical guy. I try and get a matchup and match him up against Keo Craver. You get 5'10", Craver may be their best cover guy, but you get 5'10", against 6'2". So you got four inches here at the bottom. Second and goal from the 12. Beasley to put it up across the middle. Morgan to the end zone. Touchdown, Kansas State. a great job on the crossing route and Ron Hudson, look at the ear to ear grin, accepting the high five. Ron, take the high five. Take the high five. Ron Hudson, definitely head coaching material. And now Kansas State is going to go for two because they are only up by one. And now the sleet has turned to snow and it is really coming down in Manhattan. 2.52 to play, 29-28, Kansas State with the lead. Two to snap it, one to snap it, and they're not going to get it off. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. It's easier if you're going to throw the ball from the seven-yard line as opposed to the two-yard line. It gives you a little more depth to work with to the back of the end zone line. Quincy Morgan quiet in the second half. But Bill Snyder stud, the senior out of Garland, Texas, with only his second reception in the second half, and it was a big one, a touchdown. That has given them the lead. I would think in this situation, you still want to spread Nebraska out. You want to move them this way and this way, and then take number 18 up the middle. For the three-point lead. It's on the eight. He's going to have to negotiate his way around Carlos Polk, who's just standing there in the middle as if to say, I double dare you. Wesley, Lockett, Morgan to the right. Wesley looking to go out on the flat. Beasley looking for somebody. Throws it across the field, and that is knocked away. And the lead will be remain at one. seats Kansas State fans Quincy Morgan has given your team the lead number four versus number 16 the Big 12 North title on the line and Kansas State who has beaten Nebraska just once since 1968 has taken the lead Randy Stella Corel Buckholder back to receive the kick and it's turned into a winter wonderland here in Manhattan, Kansas. The snow continues to fall. You see, Jamie Ream has tried to get an area where he can put his plant foot down so that he can get into that ball so he just doesn't slip through it. We've had rain, we've had sleet, now we have snow, and we have an exciting game. A line drive kick. Buckholder from the five his way over the 20 up to the 22 yard line and Nebraska trailing by just one will begin just a reminder we still have one more game coming your way right here on Fox Sports Net our college football Saturday quadruple header number 10 Oregon State and Arizona in a Pac-10 showdown Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey are still standing by and that will come immediately following this exciting game You've almost got to run at about 75% efficiency just so that you can keep your feet. Nothing doing. Terry Pierce, who we talked about in the open, clogging up the middle along with Monty Beisel again. The one-two punch for the Wildcats. This is when having a short passing game becomes so critical. Right now, Eric Crouch is one out of ten for the ball game. But you have at 
athletes on the outside like Bobby Newcomb and Matt Davidson, they can catch the ball and make one guy miss, and you can have just as big a play as the guy springing it up the middle. Second and nine, Crouch looking to throw it. Slip ball complete to the tight end, Tracy Wistrom. His first catch of the evening and only the second completed pass by Eric Crouch. And right in between the coverage of Terry Pierce and Gerard Cooper, not a well-thrown ball, but a great adjustment by Tracy Wistrom to come up with the catch. Pickup of 16 on the play. First down inside of two minutes. Now you go with the four wide receiver package. You spread them out. I'd give a quick handoff to Alexander and try and pop it in the middle. Crouch calls his own number. Hops over one. Hits to the side, but Kansas State is there. Same result. You use Alexander as your lead blocker. You spread the defense out. And now the snow has stopped, and we're going to have a timeout. Milton Proctor, Jared Cooper talking it over. 1.36 to play. Josh Brown has already missed one field goal tonight. His longest of his this season is 45 yards, and this is probably the loneliest man in the stadium right now. The most famous snow field goal, the New England Patriots. Ron Meyer, the head coach of the Patriots, against the Miami Dolphins. They send the snow clearer out on the field in New England, Foxborough, against the Miami Dolphins. Don Chula goes crazy. I'm pretty sure that the Nebraska Cornhuskers will not be able to manufacture something to clean the snow off for that guy to get that plant foot. So if you're talking about a field goal, it will have to be less than a 35-yard attempt where he can just pooch it through. Anything that he has to drive will not be able to plant his foot to drive it. Morgan, almost 200 yards receiving and this is why this game is so important. Nebraska wins, they clinch the North. Kansas State wins, all they have to do is beat Missouri next week. Missed opportunities for both teams. Kansas State had a punt return called back. They missed a two-point conversion. Nebraska, 136 to play. Straight ahead, nothing doing. It'll be third down in about seven. Terry Pierce again, the redshirt freshman out of Fort Worth, Texas, has stepped up to the challenge that Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator, presented to him. They've got their four wide receiver package in. There's Bennett. Three to one side. Maybe that little slip screen to Bobby Newcomb right there. Newcomb in motion. He has the cross, keeps the ball, throws it. Incomplete fourth down. Wistrom, the intended receiver. It looked like Crouch never had the handle on the ball. Yeah, but we're in four down territory, definitely. It almost looked like Eric Crouch tried to pull the ball back in his hand. And this is a timeout time for Frank Solich. No time to try and just rush no. a play in. This is your season here. This is everything that you played for. When you start back in August, you're thinking national championship. Well, the road to the national championship has been iced over just a little bit for Nebraska. This is the 85th meeting between these two, and the faithful here at Kansas State have not had a whole lot to cheer about over the years. In 98, they beat Nebraska. They want to do it at home, back-to-back, -back, for the first time ever since this series began in 1911. They've never had back-to-back -back home victories over the Huskers. This could put them in the championship game. It could be a rematch with Oklahoma. We'll keep you posted on the Arizona-Oregon State score. Right now, Arizona leads it by a field goal. That game coming your way immediately following our contest. We saw a little wrinkle on the third down play. We had Bobby Newsom, Newsom coming, Bobby Newcomb come in motion. I would look for a straight ahead pass. Go straight down the field. You hook. You try and get a receiver. Your best route runner, Matt Davidson, has a lot of field to work with. This is it. Crouch, looking, looking, throwing. Incomplete! Die Sean Carter may have sent Kansas State to the Big 12 championship game. again. He had it. And it was knocked away. 
State has 51 seconds to run off the clock. Nebraska with one timeout, definitely stop the clock. Make them play, make them take the snaps. And that just might do it. Years of frustration. Dyshad Carter, the big play. Quincy Morgan, seven receptions tonight, 199 yards, two touchdowns. And this man has gotten a lot of credit. Some feel he hasn't gotten the complete credit he deserves. When we talked to him about what would this mean for the program, and he said it's just another win, but it's not just another win. This Absolutely. is monumental. Player of the ball game, no question about it. Dubbed him Superman at the beginning of the season. Well, Superman wears purple in Manhattan. Holy. Seven catches, 199 yards, two touchdowns for Quincy Morgan. Only the second victory for Bill Snyder at Kansas State over a top 10 team against 19 defeats. Would both those victories be against Nebraska? I think well, One's I, Kansas and one's Nebraska. I think they balance out, though. Final 41 seconds. Nebraska flying over the top. 35 seconds. The play clock has not been reset yet, and that may do it. 24 seconds. Let the celebration begin for Bill Snyder. Kansas State has defeated Nebraska. championship for Frank Solich are gone. Yeah! Yeah! Those goalposts are about to be going the next thing to go. What a victory for Kansas State. Nebraska took the lead in the fourth. Bill Snyder squad over Frank Solich, but then Kansas State comes roaring back thanks to Quincy Morgan. Tremendous defensive effort by the Kansas State defense. Their offense clicked what it needed to. And the fans deserve this celebration in Manhattan. Some of the pundits in the Kansas City area said this was a must win for Bill Snyder. A must win for this program. They got it. thoughts. Well, a fantastic game by Quincy Morgan. Bill Snyder talked about this guy coming up big. Just a two-year player in this program, but I don't think he could have made a bigger impact had he been here for the last 30 years. The clock says zero. It also says the final score from Manhattan. Kansas State winning it 29-28. Just a reminder, we'll take a commercial break, and then we will have Pac-10 football action with Oregon State and Arizona. Once again, the final score, Kansas State 29, Nebraska 28. For James Lofton and Eric Clemens, I'm Rob Thulin. Thanks for watching. College Football Saturday has been a presentation of Fox Sports Net.